Yeah, get it on. Got to get on a chest to get on a minute. Get it on. Thanks for tuning in. And share the show with someone. I'd be curious. I'm going to look at the ratings next week on this episode. And if you <laughs> shared it with someone, I will see it. So well, try no. it. Josh Potter, uh, very funny stand-up comedians in studio. we got a lot to get into. I'll certainly share the episode. Thank you. You're welcome. I, uh, so we started off by taking photographs of our feet mm. moments ago. Not my first uh, rodeo as far as that goes. For me, my first. Oh, okay. So, you seem like an old pro. No. I, my uh, ankle hymen was busted in that photo <laughs> shoot. You popped my cherry. It was like a casting couch uh, call for me. Yeah, you popped my cuticle cherry. <laughs> I, uh, I've often thought I have nice feet, but I never made a thing out of it because um, it just didn't seem like something you would talk about in polite company. Well, you probably know? your feet when they were in their prime, feet weren't like uh, out there as a thing yet. Yeah, you're right. When I was in my sort of prime salad foot days right. back in the mid-80s, yeah. people were staring at biceps and tits. <laughs> yeah, they were, they were still looking at tits. They weren't looking A at fool's feet. errand. <laughs> <laughs> what about the thing holding up the tits, everybody? Can we give a little love to the <laughs> pedestal? Little that, did you know you had some prime real estate there. I, I, I didn't know, but I started hearing about other people complaining about how ugly their feet were. Mm. And I was like, I think my feet are fine. And then women got into the act, not liking their feet. And again, to me, I look down, you know, when I'm talking to a woman, but it's only because I have low self-esteem. It's sure. not because I'm interested in her feet. Same. You know? I'm looking at my feet, technically. <laughs> yes, that's right. Yeah. And I'm wearing shoes. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, but then I heard that you have do some business on Cameo with foot Yes, foot I, I used to do feet more, and then it became kind of hack. You know, everyone's doing feet these days. So I thought, I'm going to pivot out of that. Mm -hmm. And then I went to something that I uniquely have, which is shoulder hair. Mm. A profound amount of shoulder hair. Yeah. So I did started doing that instead. Uh-huh. And, and you, you found that that was lucrative? It was at the time. People seemed to be into it to a degree. But, you know, since then it's kind of, you know, the well has dried. I think I've reached everybody that was into it. Yeah. It's, <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's a scary indictment of this country that that's even <laughs> no, a business. The fact that I made almost as much money as my yearly salary as a radio producer doing that is was also just highly embarrassing and i had to stop i had to turn it off i couldn't keep going i'm asking I felt like my grandpa was in heaven staring down oh me, yeah judging for me. sure yeah. i'm asking for a friend but is there much of a market for ass hair i i haven't tried ass hair yet i do have that too and i have not given that a go maybe i should yeah, I might. maybe I'm the friend you're asking for. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll we have to give that a try. We decided to uh, take a picture of our feet before for the show and then put it up and uh, you can vote. Now, it's going to be a blind taste test. Right. You, you, we were not going to tell you whose foot was whose, but uh, people can vote and see who has the nicer foot. Yours like mine. I mean, because when people look at them, they're going to see they're kind of similar. You also have hairless feet, but you're at your ankles when it starts, right? Mm -hmm. When the hair starts. Yes, exactly. My hair goes bald from the ankle to like mid shin. Mm. Then the hair kicks in and then dies off somewhere around mid thigh and mm. then connects again around the ass and <laughs> lower back. But it's weird. And it's also weird that we judge so much, you know, like... My shoulders and back are bare. Huh. Yours are not. No, and I so, feel like it was because I shaved them as a, at a young age. I, it's just all genetics. But then my ass is hairy. I don't know many people that have zero back hair mm -hmm. and a hairy ass. Yeah, yours stops at such a weird spot. Mine goes from, like, my eyelids down to my ankles. Everything above my eyelids is hairless now mm -hmm. and beneath the ankles. So we'll put it up. People can uh, vote on it. Yeah, once it's up, I'll give you guys some live updates. I, I, you know, in, in the... Uh, yeah, so the reason being is when Adam heard about you, he, Adam's, uh, he walks in and he just goes, I have nice feet too. Take, and, then he, he, and then he takes off shoes. He clips his toenails. I, look, Are uh, you a runner? And tra no, trans and just to be transparent, my toenails needed a clipping for mm. a couple of weeks. So and did, I, and I you did it for this. That's great. I did it for the shoot. <laughs> nice. Well... 
I would have done it at some point eventually. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. But it was time. Okay. So uh, so I did that, and uh, and then we'll let we'll put it to the people. I, I would have thought you did things that would have made your feet because I feel like runners and people like that, their feet is all, they're all busted. You know, yeah. they've got like blisters. There's a toe out of whack and everything. Mine have seen no hard action. Mm, you you know? didn't play a lot of organized sports. I growing played up. soccer, believe it or not, but That's I didn't. Foot uh, base. Yeah, but nothing bad, I guess. I think I was young enough where it didn't get too mangled. You know, mm-hmm. and I'm not playing for you know an Italian super team. You know right. what I'm saying? I was playing high school, so. Um, so I was watching the uh, Rock Hudson documentary mm. last night on. HBO, I think. Uh, it's an okay doc. I think if it wasn't the whole gay AIDS angle, I don't I don't think HBO would have picked it <laughs> yeah. up because it wasn't very well. Within a half hour. Just well, the, the career of ladies man Rock Hudson yes. would have made a documentary. <laughs> yeah, it just it it there wasn't it wasn't that well constructed as a guy who's constructed a few docs, but I think they like the angle of AIDS and and there's a few revelations that were in there, at least uh, for me. Uh, one is her interviewing one of his partners, and they said he had a huge hog, and he wasn't <laughs> going to let him put it in his ass. And I remember being like, I clutch for pearls that I wasn't even wearing, like, I, I, and I'm an old man, and I'm an atheist, and I still thought, yeah. it, you could just say he had a big dick, and then we'll do the ass math. But, yeah, we uh, didn't need to know. But the other part was, and you have to think about this time. Did he never take it then? He just said no, and that was the end of it? Rock Hudson wasn't like, you're going to... I got to check the uh, director's cut and <laughs> yeah. see if there's some found footage, right. but I didn't get to the bottom of that, okay. pardon the pun. But what I did find out, which was insane, if you have to just think about this, Rock Hudson is a beautiful Adonis of a man. He's a, you know every woman's dream. Mm-hmm. He's just a thousand movies with a shirt off and everything. He's gay the entire time. Right. This is, you know, 50s Hollywood, 60s Hollywood. Can't say a word about it. So he's trapped in this world, living this lie. And at some point, he he gets older, and it's clear something's wrong with him. He seems to be losing a lot of weight. Mm. You know, he's not himself. And he was such an aesthetic uh, specimen early in his life that when those guys start to, you know, when Danny DeVito got old, no one said anything because it wasn't like, oh, I remember the old Danny DeVito. Yeah, everyone thought he looked great. Oh, remember Louie from Taxi? (laughs) What a heart drop. (laughs) Like, he was always a troll. Right. But Rock Hudson is getting old, and he's looking like he's got something. Mm -hmm. At the the very end of his career, 1984, 1985, he gets cast on the very successful show Dynasty. Mm-hmm. Dynasty had the, it was like Dallas and Falcon Crest and Dynasty. There was a big one hour yeah. like Friday night network shows, like Secession in the eighties. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. And he, Linda Evans, becomes um, one of his love is his love interest in this, and they finally come to the scene where he has to plant a passionate kiss on her. She's mm. she's fallen off a horse. She's laying on her back, and he leans over and just, like, plants one on her. But he knows he has AIDS. Mm, And then they didn't know how how it was going around. And they didn't know if it was, like, handshakes or, you know, it was, like, early early COVID. You know, Mm -hmm. don't bring that McDonald's bag in the house. (laughs) Quarantine (laughs) Amazon box. (laughs) Quarantine it in the yard for two days. Yeah. Yeah. Windex your vegetables. Right, right. That's that's where we were with AIDS in, in 1984, 1985. And we didn't know if hugging or handshake spread it. This was a kiss. Right. And so... He's like, oh, man. So he reads the script, and he's like, i got to do this passionate kiss with Linda Evans, but I can't say anything, Mm -hmm. and I can't get out of it. So he's literally, like, drinking mouthwash and stuff, like trying to to kill anything in there, and uh, then goes down and gives her a kiss, but he gives her a kiss with, like, his lips pursed and his mouth tight shut and like not breathing and stuff and they're pulling in tight you know yeah. and the director's like uh we gotta do this again yeah. and he's like well what's the problem it's like you gotta be a little more passionate yeah, here that, that didn't look like a real kiss and it's like okay 
It does the You're same. You're kissing her like a gay guy with AIDS. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? Come on, Rock. <laughs> You're Rock goddamn Hudson. You got a hog so big, no gay guy would ever let him put it in your keister. Come on now, Rock. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, I want to see I want to see that saliva bridge yes. when you break away, you know? <laughs> so he comes down and does the same kiss. Mouth, you know, shut, you know, lips pursed. And they're like, cut. Rock, come on, man. We got to do this again. You know, he has to keep doing it again and again, but he can't do a passionate. Can't do it all the way. Kiss with uh, Linda. And the the irony is, is he does the safety kiss, but has to do nine takes of the safety kiss. (laughs) Like he had to just be like, oh, my fucking God. Yeah. At the end of the day, if you're going to give her AIDS, one passionate one's probably less of a, a devil than nine <laughs> shitty ones. Right. right. <laughs> Statistically. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So should have just got it over with. <clears throat> then he basically wraps up his tenure over at uh, dynasty and he's health is falling and he's still not telling anybody he has AIDS there, but everyone's speculating. Like, mm. He's so thin. He looks so gaunt and old. What they you think know? like tapeworm? What were they guessing at the time? Do you His think? like publicists were saying like anorexia and stuff. <laughs> I mean, they were just, it's just an eating disorder. Folks. Just <laughs> grasping at straws. And then he goes to um, Paris mm. and he's just going to go, I'm just going to kind of chillax in Paris. And then he goes to Paris and he has a falls very ill, goes to like a Paris hospital, and then at that point they admit he has AIDS. <laughs> and then the hospital, because it's 1984, goes, "We gotta get him out of here." Wait, wait a second, what? <laughs> they don't they don't know what to do with yeah. people with AIDS, but it's a death sentence, and they want him out. So they say, uh, "You got to go back to Los Angeles and die in Los Angeles." So he tries to go back to Los Angeles. But now the word has gotten out mm. that he's got AIDS. And it's on the front cover of every newspaper and evening news and tabloid. So Air France goes, we, we're not flying him back. He's got AIDS. <laughs> like, yeah. I, we, we're not going to sit him next to people. We don't know. No. He has to charter a 747. By himself. For 250 grand <laughs> and just fly alone. Oh, my God. Back to L.A. <laughs> That's crazy. The, the French wouldn't even let him stay in the country. Right. That's crazy. Right. Yeah. Quarantine uh, in a PJ. Yeah. They're they're like, we're good with Roman Polanski being here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you AIDS guy? Someone who roofied a chick and butt fucked her in a jacuzzi when she was 13? We don't judge. <laughs> but you, with your AIDS... Bridge too far. Bridge too far. Get out of here. Yeah, we're throwing a, as a matter of fact, we, we're preparing our Polanski parade, so we need you to kind of clear out about now, would you? Or help build the float. Yeah. And yeah. then when they came, so he chartered his own seven, they wouldn't even give him like a small Cessna. They were like, you got to get well, this back is, seat of the This is like 1985. Like, remember, back in the day, when I used to go to New York a lot, 1999, 2000, or whatever. There's no such thing as like a 737 getting across the country, like mm. one of those, one of those uh, miniature airplanes. It was all 747s, 777, 767s. Oh sure, planes. You got to go into the plane, and when you were in first class, I just talked to Doctor Drew about this 20 minutes ago. He's in New York. He's leaving now. You go onto the plane and you turn left, mm-hmm. and if you turn left, that's real first class right that's what they used to have now i don't know if rock turned left or right or the seat <laughs> plane even had seats in yeah. it do you think they bugged him a lot about a seat belt that flight like i want to know i want to de- uh, interview with the pilot who had to do this harrowing flight you know he had to transport Ro- aids rock hudson back across the atlantic yeah what do you think was going through his head he's got the mask on the other thing it was it was probably that 747 was probably the first prototype for the bulked up door <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> for the reinforced door going into the cockpit air marshal with a gun behind it <laughs> yeah so he flies back uh i i don't know he lands in la lives another two weeks or yeah. or something and then i don't know dawson you can look it up when once rock got back in like 85 uh how long after never they, said he was gay uh, the whole time right after even with the aids mm-hmm. you know just got aids i got it from a needle right whatever. yeah 
I, uh, I, how long after he died did they start doing that campaign where it was like, you can kiss AIDS people? Remember that was like a thing? Like, yeah. Well, he kind of, once he came out with AIDS, not by being gay, right. then it, it just basically got into the zeitgeist and then uh, Liz Taylor mm. got into it. Okay. And then the next thing you know, fundraisers and parades and, you know, we the, 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 AIDS, the AIDS quilt. Yeah, was, yeah, was yeah, rolled yeah. Out. <laughs> he was diagnosed with AIDS in 84 and died in 85. Does it say when he flew back to L.A. or what month he Not left? on Wikipedia. I'm still looking. Paris. Been when he left Paris and when he landed. Or when, when he left Paris and then when he died. Those would be... We'll be able to uh, do the uh, AIDS math. I'm disappointed in that. Paris. I thought if there's any place you can go and die with gay AIDS, it's Paris. Yeah. Yeah, this is not a Middle Eastern country right. type situation, <laughs> yeah. but this is a fabulous Paris kind of thing, right? Yeah. That would be my number one country I'd want to be diagnosed with AIDS with. Would, sure. Would be Paris. Exactly. Right. Especially if you're gay. Right. Not, it's called Gay Paris. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly. That's right in the fucking title. That's why he went there for Christ's It says sake. it on the sign <laughs> when you leave Bordeaux. <laughs> That's ironic. Yeah, it's got the word yeah. gay in it. It's a, t it's a shame. I can't yeah. believe I'm disappointed in them. Oh, we have the kiss scene. Oh, boy. That looks... I mean, he's... And, and I... And, and, he actually, I see, I would be like, could we get her on her feet? Because I just feel like gravity and AIDS is not working yeah. in Linda's favor or she here. She should be on top. She should be on top. Did they have a, any sort of interview with her when she found out he oh, had AIDS? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was. Uh, well, the, the, because of this kiss, Screen Actors Guild came out with a new rule. Where they you you have to be notified if there's an open mouth kissing scene. They won't because of discrimination. They don't have to say who it's with. Uh huh. You, are, you will be notified if there's an open mouth. She yeah. looked like the end of Ace Ventura, where they were all chewing gum and wiping their <laughs> mouth out. So he's over her. She's on her back. He's smelling like Lavoris and AZT. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a big breath. What's going through his mind right now? Oh my God, he's he's having a. You I'm know, I'll tell you what's going moment. through his mind. He's having a Greg Luganis moment. Mm. Remember that? Yes. Max Pata? Yes. Max Pata? I don't. Um, Greg Luganis. You know the- Diver. The, the, diver. Smashed, he, when he smashed his head on the diving board? <laughs> he whacked his head on the stand. Like, I, I don't think it was, I don't think it was, was a it diving the board. I think it was the base. He was okay. doing a jump. Did the, the, the backflip. Whacked his head on the base. You know, the- four meter base or whatever got a big gash in the back of his head knew he had aids and then knew the guy who was like tending so to him up, yeah. he's bleeding all over the guy he's bleeding yeah. in the pool that's worse than a kiss i mean yeah <laughs> yeah listen um you i've um uh, i've seen caddyshack mm-hmm you get a mounds bar in a pool, you got to drain it. You get AIDS in a pool. You got to drain that goddamn pool. You got to reconcrete it. He's yeah, bleeding in the pool. Draining's not enough. No one knows anything about AIDS. You know, he's bleeding in the pool, then the guy's wearing. All right, so The Rock is, is over Linda Evans, and he's going to give her a kiss. Pretty tight lip. Oh, they, they cut it. Oh, <laughs> freeze frame. <laughs> freeze frame. Oh, yeah, because there wasn't a lot of moving with those mouths. So then she finds out she's got AIDS. And now this, this is back. Oh, no, she didn't have AIDS. But, but this is back when these shows had 32 million people watching. Right. And the, the country had 172 million people in it. I mean, <laughs> yeah. percentage wise, it was like one third of the country right. would watch the Dukes of Hazard, you know? Yeah. So her phone's ringing off the hook. Yeah, yeah. Let's just say if she had texts, it would blow up. Yes, <laughs> yes. And she's having, according to her, I always wonder if there's a little hyperbole here, but she's one, she's having makeup artists saying she's not going to work with her and like friends oh not coming over for God. dinner parties and stuff like that. That's what she says. Mm. But it was also sort of AIDS hysteria. Like I, I, you know, COVID. I mean, the early days of COVID, I was found myself uh, one day just with my daughter in Santa Monica. And I called, a fr I realized, oh, I'm right near a good friend of mine's house. 
and we're just like in the neighborhood on a Saturday and uh, I hadn't seen him in a little while. And I just called him and said, uh, oh, hey, we're right up the street. We're just you're home. Like, well, I've got my Natalia. Let me stop by and uh, say hi. Like, have a beer. Chillax a little bit. He goes, uh, I'll, I'll bring the beer out to the driveway. <laughs> I go, I'll drink the beer in my car. First off, Santa Monica cops, don't, they frown upon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you drive around the Heineken between your legs. <laughs> I go, no, I'll just come stop in and visit. He's like, uh, I don't. Uh, I'll hand you the beer like with a stick. <laughs> yeah. I'll get my pool skimmer out. All those claws. Put a six pack in it and <laughs> push it through the driver's side window. I was like, oh, is this what we're doing? It's like, yeah, that's what I'm doing. I'm like, oh, fucking pussy. Yeah, that's tough. Yeah, I said, fuck that. I mean, so, I, I lived out here during all of that, and my whole family and friends still lived in Buffalo. I had just moved here, so all my friends and family were in Buffalo, so I was isolated anyway. I'm like, welcome to my world, everyone, you know? I'm just alone regardless, so. So uh, you did a lot of radio coming up, right? I did. In Buffalo? Yes. That's Morning? And Cleveland. Mornings, afternoons, evenings, the whole, pretty much everything but middays. And like stupid midday. as the what guy? I was... In the beginning, like a stunt boy, and then I became one of the producers or like content guys, and then I was like a third mic, and then I just spun records for a little while too on top of that, which was fun. I miss that. Did you? Oh, sorry. Dawson's got the Hudson. Okay. So unknown to the public, Hudson was diagnosed with HIV in 1984 on June 5th. He was traveling in and out of the country to try to find treatment. He collapsed in his hotel room at the Ritz Hotel in Paris on July 21st, uh, 1985. Um, they said he had liver cancer. Um, <laughs> then four days later, his French publicist confirmed that Hudson did in fact have AIDS. And then he flew back to Los Angeles five days later on July 30th. He was so weak that he was removed by stretcher from the Air France Boeing 747. He had charted, which he and his yeah. Charter, yeah. chartered, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, then he was flown by helicopter to UCLA Medical Center, where he spent nearly a month undergoing treatment, released from the hospital in August of 1985, and uh, went to home in Beverly Hills and died two months later. I can't believe it didn't get out because you think about those people with like Ebola coming over. Remember when that was mm -hmm. going on? People were like, don't let them on the planes. Right. You know, there was that whole thing. So I mean, I'd imagine the hysteria was the same about AIDS. What like, year did Linda Evans get her AIDS? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's got to be, I mean, the craziest position to ever put an actor in, right? You're, doing, sure. you're giving Linda Evans a passionate kiss. You, you're the only person on the planet who knows you have AIDS. <laughs> and you have no idea how you got it or how it spread and neither does anyone else. Would you try to get out of it if you were in the situation? Would you be like, I can't do the kiss? I'm trying yeah, to... cold or something. Where you yeah. talk about, like, your character's more of a Howie Mandel fist bumper kind of guy. <laughs> like, you uh. stuff. I... I mean, I guess one could say he probably shouldn't have done it. Right, because he had no idea. It was kind of he a was fucked up thing. Literally, he was putting himself before her. Hindsight, obviously, we can look back and go, ah, oh, what were they worried about? But, you know, what if you could pass it through kissing We and we had no idea? He, he would have been a real asshole. Well, yeah. he obviously didn't know. Right. Nobody Otherwise, knew. he would have went for it. <laughs> yeah. A good friend of mine was a nurse uh, during the AIDS epidemic, and they were all scared to death of possibly catching something, and they didn't have time to do choreographed dances. Yeah. Now, and it's also lose lose because um, Linda is is hot. Uh, Linda Evans, that is. I think she was. Married to John Derrick for a while, the photographer who married Bo Derrick at mm. some point, his biggest lech in the world. But anyway, um, but for Rock, it's lose lose because not only is he have the possibility of giving this innocent colleague AIDS, <laughs> but she's one of the hottest chicks on TV, and he's gay. Mm -hmm. So who cares? Right. He's not even getting the satisfaction of making out with Linda Evans. <laughs> yeah. He didn't even get half half wood no, yeah. on that. So from him, I'd try and bail out of that. 
You know, like I think Rock's bailing because he's gay. That's what they think. The whole I time. would, <laughs> I would, I think what I, I would like roll an ankle coming out of my trailer. Right, right, something, something. Yes, just avoid that shot. I'd put a like some hedge clippers to my fa- face or something. You know what I mean? I don't know. Just, just get it. Like, oh, I can't kiss. You know, my face is yeah. fucked up or whatever. And I, then the medic has to come in and mop up your yeah, AIDS that's, blood. That's true too. Come on, use your head, I, man. I, yeah, yeah, terrible, terrible, terrible. That's making it worse. <laughs> that's so <the> worse. <laughs> I actually made it worse. I, you did. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's see. Oh, uh, the diving board thing. All right. I got a bunch of stuff I want to get into, but uh, I think we'll take a break. I could give you an early poll result. Oh, early poll. I gotta say, I'm. I'm, I'm I never thought about my feet, but now I'm becoming fiercely competitive. I know. <laughs> about my feet. I've I never think, seen this side of you. Have I ever brought up my wonderful feet? No. In the whole time never. you've known me? It no. was the last text I expected to get. <laughs> it was a weird I text will to say. send. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and, uh, yeah, we mentioned that Dr. Drew is the one that told Josh that he had nice feet. Mm-hmm. I said, Adam, you've been working with Drew for how long? And what has he said about yours? And you said he's never even mentioned your feet. No, because the only time I'm barefoot around him is when I'm walking on his back, but he can't see it. Yeah, he can feel, though. You have very yeah. smooth feet. Yes. All right, well, that's... Supple was the word he used. You want a, <laughs> go ahead. You want a quick update? Yes. All right, well, we put up this poll. You can put up the picture. It's just on Twitter. It's a blind poll. Just which foot is nicer, one or two? Do you know mm-hmm. which one you are, Adam, just based off this picture? I, I, think, I, think, I, I think I do. Yes. Well, which one? Which one? I think I'm the one on the left. Well, number one. Yes. I was going to say, I think I'm number one, because I think my middle toe is having a wonky day. Oh. Ben, what is it? No, I think I'm the one on the left. Which foot is which? in this? Adam point? is one, Josh is two. Oh. Adam mm. is one, Josh is two. Well, we have over 100 votes at the moment, and, mm-hmm. and um, it's it, there's a clear winner. Oh, uh, yeah. Really? I don't, a clear winner. I, you know they what? look so <laughs> similar to me. I am blind, but... <laughs> Well, let me say this. Your number two toe is a little uh, on the spectrum. Yeah, yeah it's a little, a little, off, little right? down syndrome. Yeah, it's a little tilted. My number two toe is fine, but it needed to be positioned a little better. It needed to be pushed to the left a, yeah, it's, a, a you eighth of an inch. You just right. caught yeah, it a little pose. out of choreography. Well, I didn't there. bring my toe spacers because I didn't know we are doing this. <laughs> <I know. laughs> They're in the car. It's, it's really raw here. It's, it's... All right. Well, I, I didn't file my shit down either. I came in blind. You know, I was in the car of, already when I. Both of you have really low self esteem right now regarding your feet. You both mm-hmm. think you're the loser at this moment, right? Well, Josh's toes do something that almost no toes do, which is a very linear crest like movement from the big toe down to the small toe. Yes. Mm-hmm. Most people I'm proud have of that. Most people have an out <laughs> evidently. Most people have an outlier toe that sticks out further than the big toe or further than the toe it's next to, which it should be smaller than. Yours has a sweep to it. It's <laughs> a, it almost a joie de vivre. Like you know, just a beautiful <laughs> crescent sweep. So because my middle toe isn't longer than my big toe. Does that mean I have like autism or something? What is well, what no, that but if your hand is bigger than your face, it means you're retarded. You want to try that during <laughs> yeah, the commercial let's see, break? Let's give that one a try. <laughs> <laughs> now, look, let's not focus solely on the toes. Yeah, there's other parts. because I feel like my midfoot is nicer than yours. You have a nice arch there, a curve. Yeah, and a, and a sort of subtle slenderness to oh, it. Right. Although one could argue being veiny is an uh, advantage. Mm. Ah, mm-hmm. but I don't you know would why. know. I mean, people actually pay to see. Yeah, see number here. two is certainly the most symmetrical foot. Yeah, I also have a sock line that I should have massaged. <laughs> out. Sock line itself. <laughs> sock line doesn't. Help. I should have rubbed it out. <laughs> All right. All right. So the results of the poll right now. Um, we just tweeted it out. There are 126 votes. Mm-hmm. Foot number two is in the lead. With seventy six point two percent of the votes. God damn. That's Josh. So Josh yeah. is in the lead. Yeah. My so oh my. He is Look seventy wait uh, seventy six reigning champ. Point two oh percentage. Percentage, yeah, of the one hundred twenty six mm. votes. Yeah. You know, but okay. But those are the early foot voters. They they are. These are yeah, these are the immediate ones. Who knows? And <clears throat> and I gotta say yours has more character. I mean, I don't mean that I, <laughs> I'm saying that in a way that like Yeah, mine's Mine's kind of a Lyle Lovett. Yes. And yours is more of just a Clooney. You know, pretty boy, yeah. dime a dozen. 
Everyone had one in high school. I was trying to think of chicks yeah. to compare them to, but I, well, I'm, I I'm like looking, that. I think Adam has the classic, the classic foot. The, like maybe in the maybe in the sixties or seventies, it would. It, it's yeah, more of a classic you know what? Foot, but if I, is Josh is a modern beauty. You're like a, a chick with a bigger nose, where you're like, ooh, I don't know. What I'm it is a Uma about Thurman that. type. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. uh, yeah. You're a little Cindy Crawford. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm much more interesting. <laughs> exactly. I look. I feel like if I position my toes a little nicer and rub my sock line out. Yeah, I I'd, want to do coke in the bathroom I, with your foot. Not I'd mine. be nipping at your heels, <laughs> pardon the pun. All right, well, look, we got to keep the vote going. We'll keep it open, yeah. All right, and there are no that. losers in this game. People <laughs> understand. All right, except for the people listening. All right, we'll take a quick break. We'll be right back after this. Let me tell you about Turo Innovative. It's the world's largest car sharing marketplace with Turo. You can book any car you want, wherever you want, from a community of local hosts. Browse a huge selection of vehicles for just about any occasion or budget. Book an SUV or minivan for a family road trip, a pickup truck for some errands, or even test drive an EV. Every trip is backed by liability insurance. Terms, conditions, and exclusions apply. Find your drive. Forget your boring rental cars at Turo, T-U-R-O dot com. Let me tell you about Just Thrive. Love this company. Got some stress in your life? Like to hit the pause button and just breathe? Well, Just Calm from Just Thrive. They can help. Just Calm's all-natural blend of mood-lifting, psychobiotics, and brain-nourishing B vitamins helps you take back control and feel like your most cool, calm, and collected self. Multiple studies prove it works quickly to soothe everyday stress and sharpen focus. In as little as four weeks, or try Just Thrive Probiotic, a spore probiotic that banishes gas and bloat so your gut can produce more serotonin. That's your happy hormone. Plus, it supports better sleep. This is the one I take. You'll feel the difference. You got to take care of the gut to take care of the brain. I know these guys. I went to dinner. We had Tina on the show. This is a great company and people that are committed to your health. It's Just Thrive, right, Dawson? With Just Calm and Just Thrive Probiotic, you'll have the ultimate stress-fighting duo to help you feel cool, collected, and in control. Get 20% off your first 90-day bottle of Just Calm and Just Thrive Probiotic today. Visit JustThriveHealth.com and use promo code ADAM. Josh. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Josh Potter in studio, comedian. He's got shows coming up. Uh, <laughs> yeah, gonna down be... the road. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're down the road. Well, okay, people can just go listen to your podcast, Thank Josh you. Potter Show, and uh, look for dates down the road. Yes, sir. Um, you have kids? No. Okay. No, I don't, Thank, thankfully. <clears throat> for not some... for my, not my, you know, I would like to have kids, but yeah. thankfully for the kids. For, yeah, for, for the... the kids' sake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, and then the other kids who would play with them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, because they're going to be brought down a notch, yeah. too. <laughs> thankfully for society, I do That's what I was going to say. Yeah, exactly. Say. Um, I, uh, something happened in the, the zeitgeist of America where people are now trying to impress their kids. And I, I've fallen into that trap as oh, well. Oh, interesting. Okay. Um, you'll see it. You'll see it with like celebrities. Well, there'll be some guy and he'll be the biggest action star in the world. And then he'll get a voice on Disney's, you know, Little Mermaid or something. And he'll go, finally, my daughter mm. can appreciate, you know, she doesn't care about all the big action and the blockbusters and everything. But by me doing the voice of the sand crab, <laughs> yeah. you know, that got her, you know. And and you can you can see them up there. Like they're collecting Oscars, Academy Awards, Emmys and stuff. They're thanking their kids and talking about talking to them through the camera. You know, go to bed now. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. with the, 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 by, by the way, the, the, the babysitter's fucking them. <laughs> so they're not looking at the TV set. <laughs> It would be ironic if the babysitter was like balls deep in one of these kids and saw the set. Go to bed. As soon as I'm done fucking her. Mommy right. loves you. Where yeah. were you when uh, your dad got an Oscar? I was having my biggest trauma. I'm being penetrated yeah. by Jeff. Yeah. Our old neighbor. It was 14 years older than I was. Yeah. So it had to have happened at least once. Sure. Come on. Okay. So there's this like, but but you have kids and you want to impress them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And then your kids are all up into, or my kids or the kids end up inevitably being up into people that you have no, mm -hmm. you know, 
you know, my daughter will be like, uh, have you ever interviewed Britney Spears or have you inter- ever interviewed? Or, uh, no, sorry. Those would hurt. even be bigger stars yeah. than they probably are saying. They probably no, are they, saying names. They went you know Taylor know. Swift. Like, oh, okay. what about yeah. what about Taylor Swift? And I was like, I talked to Dana Gould, you know? And they're like, <laughs> who the fuck is that? Yeah. You know? He's super funny. <laughs> He's funnier than Taylor Swift. Like, they... That Kim doesn't. Kardashian, that they Gaga. You know, yeah, and even the even the guys that I I really like, I realize they don't even know who the who the hell. Well, that I is. thought it would have gone the other way because I I would have thought you could have a picture with like the all the presidents ever that have existed while you were alive, and then your kids are like, well, they're not on TikTok. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, they, they there's would, some guy you never even heard of on TikTok that. No, they one rather. Taylor Swift picture would go for whoever was on Mount Rushmore okay. and, and beyond. You know, that's mm-hmm. just who they are. Mm-hmm. So. Um, I've never been able, I, you know, my claim to fame with my daughter was, uh, Beyonce and, uh, Destiny's Child came into Love Line once and, mm. and sung Say My Name a cappella, And, uh, she came up to me like the Teen Choice Awards or something back when she had to, and, you know, was trying nice. to get on Love Line. I got that and I got Fergie from the Black Eyed Peas coming on to me at a party, oh. like, trying to trying to get me into a bedroom or something. Those nice. are those are those are two good stories. Is that before she pissed herself or Fergie? Yeah. I think it's pre piss. Pre piss, okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I didn't know if that like low, you're like, I'm good, Fergie. <laughs> well even if it was even if it was post piss, oh, okay. she definitely would have cleaned up by then. <laughs> okay. This yeah. would have been several months later. <laughs> There's no way those underwear were still soft with Fergie pee. All right. By the way, you're in like the point zero 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 one percent of people who have stories like that and and those are just like throwaways. She doesn't give. Yeah, the, the, she kind of likes the Fergalicious uh, trying to corner me in the, at the party. Uh, her daddy. Um, now, but what happened the other day was she follows Britney Spears, mm. and Britney Spears just posted a old school picture of herself. And Are it had it? Pops Corolla in it. Oh, and that's pretty cool. My daughter was just like, um, I uh, I was just following Britney Spears, which I'll try to talk her out of that later. <laughs> it's just a picture. Of One of the most Britney. followed accounts on Instagram. And you made the grid. It wasn't even a story. She posted it to her grid. This is a hard. And it's not post. even a collage or anything like that? Oh, no. It, um, not a collage, but it is a slideshow. Oh, so a she slide. posted like that's three. What I was yeah, okay. the, the carousel. But the reason she posted it, by the way, she could have tagged you. Mm. No tag. Mm. Should have tagged you. But um, no tag. But she was actually talking about her jacket. She's like, "Oh, I'm going to Italy, and I'm wearing the same jacket." Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm going to a wedding some <laughs> at some point. I'm yeah. going to wear my same jacket. So there you go, yeah. Brittany. But of course, my daughter was like just scrolling through her shit, and that was a that was a good that's, day for her. That's yeah. awesome. <clears throat> that's. <sighs> Well, if you think uh, now you you juxtapose that to our parents, which is no parent was trying to impress their kids when I was a kid. Mm -mm. It it was sort of like they wanted my parents sort of treated their kids like like uh, probably how you'd act your first day in prison. You know, I mean, just look (laughs) down, keep walking. Don't draw any attention. Don't strike up any conversations. You know, I mean, just put your hands in your pocket. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just mm-hmm. you do, eye contact. That could be a problem. You know, just, just yeah, low pro. To, don't get in any trouble with the guards. Just keep walking. Sure. And and there was never an attempt. I mean, they wouldn't even put out a cigarette if they got into a car. You know, with <laughs> yeah, their yeah. kids, they wouldn't wind the window down. Or, all right, much much less impress. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's a thing now where it's like, I'm trying to get my kid to see them, you know. Then I, and it, it's a complete role reversal because kids, I remember like my childhood, kids' childhood. When I was a kid, you'd go out front, you'd be riding around on your huffy, you'd be trying to ride a wheelie, you know, for an hour. At some point, you'd figure out that you could ride a wheelie that was like six foot long or something like that. And then you'd go inside and you'd tell your mom to come outside and just stand (laughs) on the porch while you attempted to pop a wheelie and ride it for a pedal and a half. You know, watch me, you know, watch me do it. That was the kid trying to impress. Yeah, look at me, Dad, look at me. Right. That kind of thing. Not... Not anymore. No. Now it's the parents 
Do trying to impress it, the kids. Could it be a show business thing? Because I know other be. people that are in show business have said the same thing, where they're like, my kids aren't impressed by me. And it's like, who, who didn't you buy the house? You right. Know, that should be impressive enough. Oh, my God. I had this realization about six years ago. I pulled in with a brand new Jaguar into the garage and I walked in and my kids were like in the family room and I said, <laughs> daddy's got a brand new Jag. You want to check it out? And they're like, we're good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're good. Now, do you think like a roofer that lives in like Poughkeepsie is dealing with the same thing? Like where he has, he's going, he's like, I got uh, 38 likes on this photo, kids. You know, what are they trying to impress with? I feel like the roofer from Poughkeepsie, if he got a new bed box on his Chevy Silverado, <laughs> the whole fucking family would eat dinner in the yard <laughs> so they could marvel at it. This is, these kids are, yeah. this is a Hollywood burnout yeah, maybe. situation. To be fair to my dad, my dad shall be taking his move to the grave because I did buy a Ferrari at one point. The Ferrari was in the garage. My dad came to the house and I said, Dad, I got a new Ferrari in the garage and he didn't want to go look at it. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine that as a dad? <laughs> he just put his hands in his pocket no, and did, the prison, did yeah. the prison walk <laughs> right into the kitchen. My father asked me to uh, for some money for taxes, he said. But then when I went home, he had a new Corvette. What? Yeah. How much? Not a new one. It was a used one, but it was new to him. Mm. So it was a few, you know, it was, I just gave him a couple thousand dollars, a few thousand dollars, and he's like, yeah, I can't, you know, the taxes. And I'm like, all right. So I gave it to him. And then I was like, did you see my new car? And it was oh. A see, my dad would have never Corvette. gone and looked. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I didn't go look. <laughs> what? <laughs> What's your follow-up question? Well, what was the time? I go, huh, that's, there was not a lot of time. It was Between like, the time you cut him the check and well, you the know, time he got the vet. Well, April or whatever around yeah, there. Yeah, 15th, right. You know, like for the, so Your it's dad like the probably beginning doesn't of the year. pay quarterly. Yeah, no, no. It's, I'm uh, guessing. It was right at the old the deadline. LLC. Yeah, 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 He's no yeah. Hunter Biden. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. It was probably late, if, if anything. But then I went home, the, the end of that. So I guess it would have been like the spring and then the end of the year, mm -hmm. which would have been, you know, the holidays or whatever. Six, seven Six months. months. Yeah, so it's like, oh, okay. Weird. Uh, you didn't have that money before. <laughs> so I was like kind of doing the math in my head. Is your dad a little shady? Oh, yeah. In, a, in all the best ways, you know what I mean? Like, See, I'm interested. Only against the IRS and people like that, <laughs> you know, like uh, corporations. Not I'm interested in the dicey dads. Yeah. Like the shady dads. Um, my father's an immigrant, so, I mean, that, uh, you know, you had to be shady coming out. So he from one of the good places? Or? He's from, uh, well, he's... A Greek man who oh, was born okay. in Egypt, so oh, he's from. It's a little yeah, bit of two oh, different yeah, things, <laughs> two different dynamics. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> so that <laughs> explains. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That explains that. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh shit! I got it. French Stewart. French Stewart. <laughs> yeah. From Third Rock from Third the Rock Sun. Yeah. From the Sun. Wonder, wonderful guy was on the show explaining had a dicey dad. Mm. You know and. Uh, had a dad who, if he needed a new set of tires for his car, would go out and rent the exact same model. You know, if he had a <laughs> Ford Escort, he'd just go rent a Ford Escort and then swap the tires and then return the Ford Escort rental with his old shitty with the tires, but they wouldn't check. <laughs> yeah. There's a part that appreciate part yeah. of me that kind of the, appreciates some that. ingenuity. Dicey, but. but that's a dicey. Yes. It's a of dicey course. dad. It's more yes. It, yeah. I, yeah, I had a friend with a dicey dad, ended up going to prison. I wish up... my father did smart things like get new tires and stuff like that and didn't do it to just cheat on my mom, that kind of thing. Well, he so, grifted his son and got a vet. That's true. Oh, but all he had to do was ask me for money. That was really what it was. He probably could have asked me for the money for the car and I would have given it to yeah. him. You know what I mean? Mm. But, but he said taxes and all that, so he played to my art strings. But there's something else to him thinking, oh, now I must show it to Josh. Rather than like, oh, Josh, yeah, can like hide I wouldn't the court, put two hide the to bed two in together. the garage. Yeah, don't. don't well, that was smart know. of him because if he would have hit it and then I would have come across it, I would have been even more pissed <laughs> off probably. But it was more like I didn't care at that point when he showed it to me. I go, huh, that's interesting. You know, is your dad? Is it a crazy Greek name or a crazy Egyptian name? Oh, uh, it's a it's a Greek name. Is it Nutty? No, it's not. It's his name is just John, but it was Yanni when he mm. was in. You know, if he was talking to a Greek fella. Oh, I was watching another documentary on wham 
Oh yeah, boy, I'm going gay fast. Yeah, this is <laughs> like there's two a hours of, gay of rock hearts yeah. and butt fucking, and then right to wham. <laughs> Choose life. Uh, Hold on, I gotta feature. beat off. I think that's just your algorithm starting to <laughs> yeah. transform. Oh. Me. <laughs> <laughs> and um, George Michael is uh, not George. Oh, really? I think he's Greek. You mm. should fucking know. I, I'm the worst Greek there ever was. You are. If you don't know, George Michael was not George Michael. His name is Gorg or something. It's got a crazy <laughs> Greek. I, I think I know. I wanted. It's like on the tip of my tongue with Greek Georges. Fuck. I, I really like, because I used to know uh, a Greek George. What is Georgios George? Kyriakos Panayaduo. But they called him Org or Gorg. He had a short, weird first name. What is George? So George Michael's real name is what again, Dawson? Georgios. Is that how you would say it? Or Gorgios? There's something probably yeah, a weird he, way to pronounce it. He called them, you know, I don't know, like you'd call Jeffrey Jeff. It was like Gorg or something. Jesus, you call yourself a Greek? That's the thing. I mean, you know, uh, Stavros uh, Halkius, uh, he, him, him and my father have spoken on the phone. Fluent Greek, both of them. And I have no fucking idea what they're saying. I really like pushed against it and I don't really know why. But you, you know? don't even know George Michael. I didn't know George Michael was... Greek, no. I knew he was gay, though. So maybe yeah. I'm better gay than I am Greek. Well, just by being Greek, you're bi. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're like, oh. They called it, looks like they called him Yog or Yog. Yog. Yes. Yog. His name was Yog. Does that sound familiar? It sounds kind of familiar. I've heard some Yogs in my day. But that's what they do. They make it like uh, the, the G and J sound. It sounds like a Y or whatever. It's really cuckoo bananas. It was crazy. He was like... George Michael was like a chubby, outcast, f weird Greek guy named Yog <laughs> in his high school. <laughs> and nobody wasn't popular or anything. And then turned out to be the sexiest man alive, but then turned out to be gay. <laughs> yeah. Cra it's weird how the sexiest men alive turn out that way, huh? I know. Women must be pissed. Oh, my God. Yeah, I mean... Look at George Michael in high school. Funny oh, high glasses, school? junior high or whatever. <laughs> Crazy, right? He does look like he would turn into like a she's all that kind of thing, though, you yeah, know? He could have been in the Goonies or something. Uh, yeah. So Yag yeah. was uh, turned into this heartthrob. Mm -hmm. And then uh, is it Andrew Ridgely? Is that his name? Yeah. The other the other Wham guy. Oh, okay. Yeah, I never Andrew knew his Ridgely. name. Andrew Ridgely, okay. Yeah, so Andrew Ridgely, who sort of became the punchline of, like, like for teams. like Right, the for, Brian Dunkelman of Wham. Kimmel Carolla, yeah. you know what I mean? It's like <laughs> somebody's <laughs> got to be. are that far off. Somebody's got to be the Andrew Ridgely of the group, right? <laughs> he was the brains of the group. He's a guy who found Jorg, like mm. Jorg got assigned to him in like the 10th grade or something, like this is a new kid and he's going to get beat up and nobody <laughs> likes him and like he hang out with him. And then, and Andrew Ridgely was the one who was pitching the music and writing the songs and, and all that kind of stuff. So he's like the brains of Wham, I think names the band and, and all that kind of stuff. And then at some point, uh, Yorg turns into George Michael <laughs> and like starts writing all the songs and being out front on the Rolling Stone photo shoots and you know even Andrew uh, behind uh, Andrew just, uh, <laughs> just smoked him like it was crazy. Oh, poor Andrew! Right, Did, he had nice things to say about him in that documentary, though, right? Yeah, he loved him. He always was like his best friend. Mm. Knew he was gay. Like didn't didn't say anything. Knew. Uh, and it called him Yorg, you know, because that's how we met him. How like psyched in, do you think he was that he was gay? Pretty, pretty yeah, psyched. Yeah, because he's getting all the, the the runoff. It's like. Oh, yeah. The, yeah. The girls are going after George. He's like, all right. Yeah. yeah. Be over he's got to go to bed. Yeah. He's got to rest his voice <laughs> yeah. for sucking cock. That's a pretty sweet deal. <laughs> that's pretty sweet. Like, better than being in a band, than being two equally hot guys in a right. band. Better to have one hot guy. And then you as a seven, but the hot guy's gay. Oh, my God. Because that is 100% of the pussy. You could be a four and get that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whereas the two hot guys, you still got to whack it up. Right. Mm-hmm. You're still out there competing. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. Yeah. 
All right. What are you going to get next? The Lance Bass documentary? <laughs> I'm going to watch. You're going to go home recommended for you. <laughs> I got to finish the Greg Luganis. <laughs> yeah. That's a three parter. <laughs> then I go to Lance Bass. Yeah. And I go Harvey Milk. <laughs> <laughs> then I hit my refractory period. Uh. <laughs> and I'll come back with Divine, <laughs> and then we'll just see uh, Waylon and Madams. Yeah. Should be a good talk about that. Uh, and then we'll see. We'll just take it. Then we'll get into the summer, and I'll take a break. I'll go to Greece let and then why? Res- yeah, let it reset. <laughs> was it Waylon? Waylon and Madam. Waylon. Shit. What was Waylon's last name? The gayest comedian. Was the ventriloquist Wayland Flowers? Wayland Flowers oh, and Madam. Oh, he had. He was so gay. He was so gay. His puppet was a lesbian. Yeah, I didn't know. Like, you're I, I remember that. <laughs> you remember yeah. him with that? It was like the uh, fruit fly. It was like his flowers. Like his Wayland Flowers and Madam. The Madam was just a queen sort of woman who would have hung around with gay men. Yeah, they call that a whatever hag. Bag hag, yeah, yes. exactly. Like you can say it. Sorry, I wasn't sure. It's grandfathered in. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Oh, we got some Waylon and, and Mab. So anyway, I got to move on to his doc. Oh sure, yeah. yeah. And then, then I'll see what other K docs I can find. Looked like Sting there. That was crazy. <sighs> Sorry, we'll show. Uh, Here's a particular woman. She's been called gutsy and raucous and sexy and outrageous, but really, she's just one of the girls. Really? Or is she oh. just one of the girls? I don't think so. Uh, her name is Madam, <laughs> and she is unique. We want to... Well, Madam, uh, we welcome you to Good Day. Uh, I told him to back up on that shot. It was just too close. <laughs> was it too close for you? Did they ever deliver Tom <laughs> Selleck? <laughs> no, but I, I wrapped myself up in a package and sent myself over to Hawaii. I and don't... delivered my own self. Well, I don't even puppets, know then. if he was a <laughs> ventriloquist. <laughs> No, he's hiding under he's a off sheet. camera. He Where may just be go? talking. Um, long he's long a puppeteer. Really? He's yes, a puppeteer. Back and forth on the country, you know, on the plane. What's with puppets? Yeah, there's no though. dual shot. Travel? It's a single shot on just right. the puppet. So. Oh, hmm. That, that puppet and Mr. Rogers' no, puppets were so scary. Yeah, I totally oh, agree. I got a Did he... Uh, <laughs> so he wasn't a ventriloquist. He must have been claimed by AIDS. I, I, you got to find Waylon. <laughs> Well, just wait Flowers. for the documentary. Yeah, yeah, right. Don't spoil it. I like how he has oh, to yeah. sit in the chair still and pretend like he's underneath. Adam, the... you're correct. <laughs> Jeez. He died of AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> he got it from the puppet. <laughs> it's not funny. They could have passed it through the puppet back then. They didn't even know. These yeah. poor people, they don't even know what they're... Jesus Christ. What year did Waylon Flowers die? 1988. Wow. Complications oh, from AIDS-related. <clears throat> Had to it's like right there. First, yeah. they watched Rock die, and then Waylon, and there was Man, no I, entertainment left. It really, I mean, it killed off pro- so many people. It's crazy. Yeah, well, so, so many gay people. I got, I got those docs to watch. And yeah, then, you got the, you got a cue. Yeah, <laughs> I'm the only guy who's seen every installment of Fast and Furious more than eight <laughs> times, and all the gay docs. Your Netflix must be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> all right, we got some uh, news to get into. Les Claypool from Primus is going to join us after the news, so that should be that should be interesting. I'm trying to... I don't even know if I've ever interviewed Les Claypool before. We're going to ask... How's a poll doing? If I made up any ground at all? You have a nod. It's still 78%. Oh, it's getting worse. To Josh, and uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm feeling really good about my feet. I'm I feel like Sydney Sweeney with the tits. I mean, I feel great. These are, yeah. are these the yeah. best feet in Hollywood? At Tony Owen <laughs> said, uh, foot number one looks creepy. Oh, fuck right <laughs> off. I like to see Tony Owens' fucking foot. <laughs> Shove it right up his ass. <laughs> Creepy. Like if I was walking on the beach, you'd be freaked out. Yeah, that's not... That, come come on. on. That's crazy. Come on. My foot is not below an eight and a half. That's like some basement dweller who's like commenting on an Instagram models thing and been like, not even fucking hot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> oh, Josh is defending you, see? Yeah, yeah thank you. Well, he's got such a comfortable lead now he can be magnanimous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll take a break. We'll come back and do some news right after this. Lear Capital in business since 1997 in Southern California. So it's a local company and I know these guys. 
3 billion in transactions. Not too shabby. 90,000 plus satisfied customers, experts in buying and selling physical gold and silver. You know, my passion for vintage racing. Well, they have a passion for precious metals. And I think we have something in common. They're both rare. They hold significant value. They're timeless and they're beautiful. And you can touch them, unlike numbers on a spreadsheet. Plus, they're both investments, and it's good for diversifying your portfolio. Lear Capital can help you with that. That's right, diversify at learadam.com or give them a call on their dedicated phone number, 800 489 6450. Why gold? Why now? There's a U.S. deficit. We keep printing money and have excessive spending. So, of course, you got to get into gold or silver. Because we all know it's not going to end well with these guys just printing money and throwing it around with a T-shirt cannon. So go to LearAdam.com or give them a call at their dedicated phone number, 800-489-6450. That's L-E-A-R-Adam.com or give them a call, 800-489-6450. Let me tell you about Angie, homeowners. You know, it's a lot of work to own a home. Whether it's uh, everyday maintenance, repairs, or dream projects, it can be hard to even know where to start. All you need is Angie. Your home for everything home. Find a skilled local pro who will deliver quality and experience. Over 20 years of home service experience. Bring them your project online or with the Angie app. Answer a few questions and Angie handles the rest. Look, you're busy. You don't have time to do all this stuff. Let Angie handle it. Take care of just about any home project in just a few taps. Download the free Angie mobile app today or visit online. Visit Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I dot com. A-N-G-I dot com. That's Angie. Let them do all the heavy lifting. Uh, well, Lady Gaga's in the news because um, that there's that whole case about her being sued for five hundred thousand dollars by this woman yeah. who was part of the crew that shot the dog walker and stole the two French bulldogs. So, backstory: this woman then returns the dogs to Lady Gaga because Lady Gaga had um, a ransom, no questions asked reward for right. for these dogs. And when she returns them, and it's found out that uh, she was part of the crew that stole the dogs. Lady Gaga's like, I'm not paying that. And she's like, whoa, no questions asked. And so she sued Lady Gaga for $500,000. All right. Now, first things first. Shouldn't the dog walker that took the bullet to the belly get the $500,000, yes. number one? Number two, you know, I'm not for locking up people with their low-level drug offenses or their consensual crimes or whatever it is, but... When you can just go out, like there's certain crimes that are like threatening crimes where they're not really shooting crimes. You mm -hmm. know, I'm like, by all means, bring a gun out and see if we can get a French bulldog. Right. But when the person says no, you can't just shoot them yeah. in the street. <laughs> yes. That's not what guns are for. They're for, this is a gun threatening crime. Right. This isn't day of the jackal. I'm going to take out the president. This is, I'm going to wave this gun around. It probably shouldn't be loaded. And if the guy, the guy, 99% of the time, the fucking guy who makes 14 bucks an hour for walking Lady Gaga's <laughs> dog is just going to give you the fucking dog. Yeah, 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 yeah. But there were the, five people charged with this. Do you think the other four people are like, what the hell? Had to be. I can't believe how deep this case goes, too. I mean, it's like the Lindbergh baby, for Christ's sake, how yeah. detailed and how long it's been going on. It, it, also, yeah. I feel like there needs to be a pre-heist discussion. Sure. You know what I mean? Like in the van, like, listen, let's just say this person is not going to give you the dog, which I don't think is going to happen. But if it does, definitely do not shoot them <laughs> yeah. right. because then you're going to get be brought up on attempted murder charges right. or murder charges or murder <laughs> yeah. charges. Sorry. Right. This guy lived. But yeah, which I would imagine. Charge. I mean, ultimately, obviously, it's way higher than a kidnapping of a dog. Do you know what yes. I mean? Like if you just stole a dog. It's not even probably a felony. Yeah. Now, they would do a gun enhancement. Sure. I'm, I'm guessing. 
But that's why you don't load the gun or use a plastic gun or something like that. Maybe maybe you get a nice judge or something like that. But don't shoot the guy. No. And I don't know what happened yeah. to the guy who shot the guy. No, so this is my exact... Yes, Doc Holliday died of tuberculosis. Every human being knows that. I want to know if he was nominated for an Oscar or not, not if he died of tuberculosis. <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> Did I ask how he died? No, I said he looked like he had AIDS. I wonder yeah, if they thought. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did they treat <laughs> it? He has Doc tuberculosis. Did they treat in tuberculosis the like AIDS back in the 18 somethings? So, um, all right. This is a perfect example. There are the Menendez brothers who I would like to be freed because I don't think there's any chance they're going to shoot me. Now put that in your gay documentary queue, by the way. Oh, yeah. That's that one's pretty go crazy. There. Yeah. <laughs> then right. there is this guy who evidently shoots people very easily. Mm-hmm. Like, he might ask for a bag of groceries you're carrying home, and if you didn't <laughs> hand it to him immediately, he would just get shot. Yeah, he can't take no for an answer. These are the guys that I went in prison. I don't want the guy who poisoned his wife so he could collect on the insurance. <laughs> that has nothing to do with me. This guy has everything to do with anyone who lives in West L.A. A real threat. A real threat. Yes. He's the kind of person who shoots you for your iPhone. Right. Or something. So I'm curious what this guy got, because this guy ain't getting what the Menendez got. But anyway. Val Kilmer did not get an Oscar nomination. Wow. For Doc Holliday. Wow, who? Now you got to find out yeah. who got nominated that year so we can yeah, get, angry, get angry. Yeah, let's get What was that? Tombstone was what, 94? Yeah. All right, so. Well, anyway, so this woman, so the backstory is, yeah, so um, these five people are charged. This woman's part of the group because she's dating one of the guy's dads who it was who was um, beating up the dog walker. Not the guy who shot him, but he did physically assault the dog walker. <laughs> what a great job I know. he did with his son. <laughs> right, yeah. so. So the, uh, her and Not her as bad her, as your dad, but yeah. the no. poor vet, but yeah, the dad, still on the spectrum. So the dad, bad. the dicey dad, and this girl helped avoid, uh, tried to help him avoid arrest, and were each charged with one count of accessory after the fact. And mm-hmm. then she takes the dogs and brings it back to Lady Gaga, sees for five hundred thousand dollars because um, for mental anguish, suffering endured pain and loss of enjoyment of life for not getting the money. So she's got the wavos to hire yeah. a lawyer. Amazing. It's crazy. The Amazing. lawyer that took the case, too. It's like, I think yeah. we could squeeze a little bit out of this. Oh, he definitely did it on contingency, too. Sure. Because she didn't have the dough to pay it up front. Right. He's like praying that this yeah. is a thing. And she played no contest, by the way. It so. at least puts his name in the news, I guess, or whatever. Does that help? I'm the I guy don't who know. Repped, uh, I, mean, I did uh, Lady Gaga's <laughs> dog napper <laughs> and Ron Jeremy, so I'm, I'm flying high about now. A lot of good press out there. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, it, it was just announced that the judge reportedly agreed with Lady Gaga's attorneys and that a criminal like um, this woman could not profit from her participation in a crime, so the $500,000 reward suit has been tossed. But Lady Gaga had to pay her lawyers right. a lot of money to represent her in this affair <laughs> yeah. after having her dog stolen and her dog walker shot. Right. Exactly. What the fuck? And to just get it thrown away. Yeah. Just go in there and get it thrown away. She had to pay a bunch of money. Yeah. And and did and the uh, guy who shot the dog walker immediately sentenced to 21 years in prison. Oh, the guy shot. All yeah, right, good. no contest. Still not going to do ne- nearly murder. the time that the Menendez boys did, right. but okay. No. All right, good. There's some justice, but there's also a lot of entitlement. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's crazy. To be like, well, what's a half a million dollars to Lady Gaga? She could give me, you know, for my failed dog napping experiment. She I bet give he me got half s- a mil. I bet he got something, the, the walk. Or maybe it's just not public. She did do something, right? She gave him something. But what didn't it sound... Like it was nothing. It was like no, something he, kind of insulting. He was doing, as I recall, the last we heard from that guy is he was doing some sort of GoFundMe thing while he mm. went clamping in a van no. around a you know Monument Valley or something. Remember that guy? He hopped in a van and said, "Like I'm, I'm, I'm finding myself." And he took that off, familiar, yeah. and he wanted wanted us to underwrite it. And it's like <laughs> get fucking Lady Gaga. <laughs> yeah. To, to, look, she had 500 grand allocated toward the dog. Can we just, I'm going to be his attorney now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. going to go, look. Turn it around on her. She had taken, she said, I will set aside $500,000 in regards to this dog. Mm-hmm. It's safe return or no questions asked or whatever. 
uh, then it turns out there was nobody to give that money to. I would argue my client is the person that money. Sure. It's already been allocated. Yeah. You've already written it off. Give it to the guy who got shot. Yeah, who, who, who took put a bullet up a, for your dog. For your yeah, dog. Like, she, like the dog was Chelsea Clinton. The, the fucking guy <laughs> took a bullet for it. Right, yeah. right. And by the way, after taking the bullet, Lady Gaga wasn't like, oh, I need justice for my dog walker friend. No, it's, hey, can I get my dogs back? Yeah. There's a ton of money for it. Yeah. I don't know. They had a weird relationship. Martin Landau won in 94 for Bella Lugosi and Ed Wood. Wow. Who else was nominated, though? Would he have been supporting actor, though? Yeah. Yeah, that's what you're saying, right? The supporting actor. Yeah. We got Tommy Lee Jones, Leonardo DiCaprio, Ra- R- Ray Fiennes, mm. John Malkovich, mm. and Peter Pulthole. Pulthole. Um From The movies? Name of the Father. Mm. The... Uh, the Caprio, 94, was... Titanic? Eating Gilbert <laughs> Grape. Grape. <laughs> Eating Gilbert Grape. Oh. All right. Sorry. Keep going. I always said there should be venereal sniffing dogs for parties. They have them that sniff out, like, kitty porn on USB drives and shit like that now. Dogs. What? Yeah, because, like... No way. Yeah, they can go into a house and pedophiles or whatever who, like, you know, hold up all the kitty porn on their thing, they hide these little USB drives, and they have dogs that can go in now and find them. Oh, smell the drives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't know what's on the drive. No, I, I did. When I read the article about they were retiring a dog who was working for a police state, they were like, this dog has busted more pedophiles than anyone. And I was like, how does he know he, this dog can smell a pedophile? That's <laughs> right. crazy. Mm-hmm. But it was, he just found the USB drives and they happened to have that type of thing. Ah, uh, so used that's it. where they hide it. Yeah, they utilized it for that. So mm. there's some luck involved. Yeah, no, I mean, well, if he's a suspected kitty porn ring you know what i mean they send in the dog they find the 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 hard drives and then they you know yeah yeah and then the well, guys, i travel with, i travel with the usb drives the guy's like yeah well the dog's retired so rest <laughs> easy thank goodness, <laughs> thank goodness. <laughs> the dog, yeah. it's also when the usb drives are found in a old tin can with coffee grounds in it <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> under the bed when they're when you're pulling That's up just, floorboards uh, isn't this family photos <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, some news about Jamie Foxx. Oh, yeah. Recently. Yeah, he's been seen, finally. Mm-hmm. So first there's a video of him just hanging out on a yacht in like the Sh- Chicago River, just passing yeah. by people, waving. A them. yacht in the Chicago River? Yeah, I mean, it's not yachty, but it's bigger boaty. He's cruising. Yeah. And then he went to a Topgolf. And top then he went golf. to a Topgolf, yeah. yeah. And, they, uh, and supposedly swing looked good. Yeah. Have there been conspiracies that it's not him and it's like a body double or anything like that? Because I f- there is don't now. put it past the internet. Yeah. That was a guy he used to finish his movie. <laughs> a very weird, because I talked to Dr. Drew about this. And it's like, anytime you're in one of those units for three months, that's horrible. Sure. Like, there's real problems there. So this is a goddamn mystery here. It's even weirder now that like still this is how this is how he's seen for the first time. I, I need my celebrities when the, when when misfortune when they're met with misfortune they all need to go full Jeremy Renner. Yeah. Footage of him being run over by snowplow. <laughs> footage of the helicopter landing. A-to-B. Footage of him taking off. <laughs> footage from him in the hospital waving yes. to his fans. Footage from him back home in a water tank like <laughs> rehabbing all the way through. He didn't That's, miss a day. Didn't miss a day. He's always I knew posting. everything that was going on with Jeremy <laughs> Renner. I was like studying lab workups on him and looking at <laughs> x-rays and stuff at my house. Like I knew where Jeremy was all the way through the entire process. And I'm saying, sorry, but you got to steal a page out of Jeremy. We need sure. to know where you're at. Exclusive interview on 60 Minutes explaining what happened. That's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Look at uh, like uh, Damar Hamlin, the Buffalo Bills player who almost died on the field. Right. When he came back. During the playoffs and was in a box, they all there was the conspiracies were insane. They were like, "That's right. not that him. was a body double." That's oh, that, that mean that's what everyone was saying. Oh, that's yeah. a body double. It's weird that he's really he come, dead. He They're just a, doing this to, to distract us or whatever. He had a big he had a big face mask on. It's like, is that even sunglasses? Like, is that even him? Mm-hmm. Right. But yeah. yeah. So yeah. All right. Uh, so I'm just saying, get ready for the conspiracies about Jamie Foxx. He's really dead. That wasn't him. He's so unique. It's just hard. I, I I saw the stuff from Top Golf and stuff. It seemed very oh okay, very him. Okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean those are b- pretty big shoes to fill. If I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, was he doing impressions while he was yeah. doing Top Golf? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> like, 
Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> yeah, no, Probably wasn't doing you, this yeah, Obama. He's you singing like Ray, then I'd be right. like, okay, that's him. <laughs> you know. All right, what else we got? <laughs> uh, all right, so there's a new uh, TikTok challenge. Mm-hmm. That's uh, making waves, pardon the pun, because uh, at least four people have died in Alabama attempting this dangerous challenge where they leap off of moving boats and hit the water. Can I oh say this about TikTok? And you guys can all school me up. I've, I've never used it. I have no idea how it works. Okay. I'm not on it. I've I never used know. it. Sure. I went to uh, my Twitter. Okay. And somebody had tweeted me a small TikTok MMA fight. About 12 seconds of a fight. Mm. And I clicked on it. So I thought, well, this would be a cool roundhouse kick or something. What, what, you would send me this if the guy did a crazy MMA move sure. on the other dude. So okay. I clicked it. It played for about 10 to 12 seconds, yeah. a couple of middleweights just kind of moving around the middle of the ring. No no punches exchanged, nothing spectacular, No, no nothing noteworthy at all. Mm-hmm. Abruptly ended, went immediately to a woman who pulled her pants down had a bizarre shaved snatch, mm. took a weird minstrel cone cup and shoved it up her vagine. Okay, that's not TikTok. Wait, yeah, because no they can't put make vaginas on TikTok, yeah. right? You can't even say fuck on I TikTok. have no idea. I, 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 I don't know what that is. <laughs> was that a diva cup, by the way, she was putting in there? She was putting a, one of those things that saves the environment. Turns out everything that helps the environment is a huge pain in the ass, <laughs> so we don't do it. You know what I mean? It's like right up there with paper straws. Yeah, yeah. But there's some menstrual cup. Yeah, the diva cup. Is it's that what's like called a, the diva cup? Yeah, it's like a, I, I encountered one, and I'm like, what the hell is that? <laughs> really? It was, yeah, it was really something that – just. and I had to ask about it because it is – it's gruesome. I mean, they reuse it. They wash it. Where How'd you were you? It? I was with a lady, and uh, she had one, and she left it in the bathroom, and I went to the bathroom. I'm like, what the fuck is that? It freaked me out. It was bloody, you know? It was great. I'm like, where the hell did she... <laughs> she plays pretty fast and loose with that cup. <laughs> yeah. I mean, she just left it next to the sink. Filled with blood? Well, it wasn't filled. It was, you know, it had Stain. blood on it. It looked like it was, you know... <laughs> mm-hmm. What's his name from the fucking American Psycho? Yeah, from uh-huh. Luke Gaines. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it was all, you know, it was like just bloody and sitting there like she was going to take it home the next day or something. I don't know. I, can they reuse them, the Diva Cups, over and over like that many times? I don't know. But if you put it on your sink, then I hope so. <laughs> they're rubber. They're like they're something you put yeah. up in there. I, it's for the environment, like you said. So you're not you're out. being intimate with this person? Yes, it was a one-night thing. And, uh, after a one-night thing? Improv, yeah. Pulled the Diva Cup on you. Yeah. Well, she. I was pretty out there drunk, and she was like, we should take a shower. And I didn't understand why until I saw <laughs> that. <laughs> Saw the diva cup and then yeah. it all made That's sense, you know. Yeah. It all made sense. This thing looked like a cone. Yeah, no, this is like a crazy. It looks like something. Put up a picture of an unused diva cup, please, guys. It looks like a like a Dixie cup, but rubber, and then it has like a little cone thing at but the end. But not a Dixie Riddle cup. <laughs> there were no knockdown yeah, yeah, jokes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, look at that thing. Imagine. Yeah, well, there are a bunch of different kinds. The thing I was looking at was different than this. Oh, okay. these look like condom tips. Yeah, that's the thing. But they're they're big. They're like uh, you're like holy shit. How does this get up? There? So it's instead of waste a bunch of materials and fill the landfill, right? And feed the seagulls. <laughs> right. Uh, you have this reusable cup. Yeah, now kids at playgrounds will be yeah. chewing on these. I things. know. <laughs> uh, so. I don't uh, think that was TikTok. I, I wanted, saw, by the way. Yeah, I don't know. Someone could look on my Twitter. I, I think I hit the heart button on it just because I wanted to talk about <laughs> oh, it. Oh, I was boy. like, yeah, all right, so let's talk about this night. Mm-hmm. You're playing the DC improv. DC improv. Evidently, you have a pretty hot set. It was good. Yeah, it was sure. good. And you know, this, I didn't think this woman was gonna want this type. Of, she followed me to the bar, not followed me, but she, you know, I went to a bar afterwards, and her and a couple other people from the show mm-hmm. came over. And uh, I just was like, "Well, I'm gonna go home tomorrow," so I was just throwing them back. And she started like making out with me at the bar, and then uh, I had like, you know, when you're super drunk, I had these like, you know, A to B. I have like still photos of the. Yeah, uh, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I was definitely, it, she didn't get my best game. You know what I mean? No, I was no, no. blasted. So it was like, I remember the shower. 
I remember like trying to have sex and then I remember I woke up, I was so hungover and I went in the bathroom and it looked like a murder, like something, not a murder, but look, I thought it was a chopped off finger or something. It was crazy just sitting there. I was like, holy shit, what is that? And I, I just, I was like, oh, I, I remember hearing about these diva cups. Uh-huh. And I and I remember seeing one and I go, oh, how does one balance that thing? It seems I don't even know how it goes in there. Does it go in there where it's like the cup up or does it go in like the cone first? I'm going cup up. Yeah, because it's got to collect Catch. things, yeah. right? Yeah. So what do you do? You do that with travel mugs too? Like, how is this? <laughs> is that, yeah, but I thought maybe it was a ceramic plug. flat part on the top when I'm putting it in the cup holder here. Well, I thought maybe it was a plug. Like you could put you put it like on your <laughs> finger like this and you plug it up. You know? Because <laughs> if you're Just doing cu- it cup it's up, come out of your eyes. If you fucking can't block it off. But if you're doing it cup up, it becomes like one of those. Uh, you know, I ever go to like a an amusement park where they have that whole water park where the top is like a bucket and then it gets yeah. filled and then a bell rings and then it dumps over. Mm-hmm. Doesn't that probably happen? Like, what if you got a heavy flow? That cup is not that hey, big. But you got to go cup up. You got to go bigger cup. I mean, big uh, And then, so you have this spent cup. Yeah. And... I just avoided it. I'm like, it's over there. I'm going to go over here. But this is after sex? Yeah, this is the next... I was like, get, I had to go catch a flight. Do um, you remember sex? Was that... The sex, like I said, was pretty shitty. I mean, I was drunk there was uh-huh. no i'm just like uh, Wait, were the sheets messed up or no she i think we did the shower and she was like you know good to go after that i don't really mm-hmm. it wasn't like it was constantly coming out you know mm-hmm. so i didn't notice any of that i guess i didn't look underneath to see have you kept in touch a little bit actually okay. not too much not mm-hmm. too much though maybe when i go back well, time it next time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to look back on when that was, yeah. what time of the month that was. All right. Yeah. Find out our ovulation dates. <laughs> yeah. Did um, you keep a steady cycle? Can I, I, Can you find this thing? Am I, can you see what it is? And I, then what is it? I don't know. We got to know which way it goes up in there. I'm looking through all your stuff, Adam. I'm not, Wait. I'm not seeing it. I was a, it was a MMA fight. Somebody tweeted me like a day ago and I just, was shocked but i was like is this what tiktok is that's not what tiktok is oh, okay so pretty soon these challenges are just going to be like it's russian roulette yeah where all the bullets are in the gun yeah try it yeah i know it's i uh, i i would love to make fun of these kids but i f- definitely would have done all of it sure when i was young yeah if you're like wow look at the numbers on this guy eating a tide pod i'm gonna give it away i wouldn't even cared about the numbers i would have just tried to jump <laughs> from that roof to that roof oh, or sure off the that. boat or whatever i would have if you were filming it mm-hmm. i would have done it sure that would make sense and i'd be dead that I, I i would if if you could film me when i was 17 or whatever i would I, me and half my friends would be dead no doubt I would have tried anything if I thought you were filming it. I came up during the jackass days, and we definitely could have fucked ourselves up pretty good trying to do some of that shit, you know? Yeah. And they always say, like, don't try this. Of course we're going to fucking try. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah, they said, experts say hitting the water from the moving boat is like hitting concrete from jumping multiple stories up. Yeah, so people break their neck. That's sure. exactly. Because I guess exactly they're going... Happens. Instant they're, death. They're breaks going, the neck. They're going head first. Yeah. They're just jumping backwards into the wake. I've even oh, gone backwards. Yeah. I, I've huh. gone like tubing and I've had it where I've gotten thrown off the tube and it's like, feels like you're landing on concrete. I can't right. imagine doing that. Yeah. They're jumping off the back, right? You literally like skip on the water. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. So I like fast. scorpioned myself on water one time. There used to be back when we had all these crazy, have you found that? I, I've not found it. Why not? I, I, I mean, I didn't you know like right. a lot of stuff, but I, I, oh, I don't. Maybe I didn't like it then. Maybe, mm. maybe it's just on the feed from yesterday. It's in your bookmarks. You'll, you'll see it. Maybe I didn't like it. Maybe it's too weird to like. Yeah, I just that, wrote that it could down. Have been it. <laughs> but I want to know what it is. It's not a diva cup, though. No, it, it looked more like a waffle cone. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, by the way, God. by the way, Devo is really missing out on some merch <laughs> with some Devo cups. Oh, Devo so, should have done that. Yeah. <laughs> their, yeah. Hat, their hats look like it. I, yeah, yeah they really they really do. <laughs> yeah, that's a, a smaller merch. version of those hats. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was from like yeah. yesterday. I'm so curious of what this thing was now. You know what I think the most useful TikTok trend was? Hmm. They were all stealing Kias and Hyundais and stuff. That was like 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Look, I was like, that's pretty cool. <laughs> I think we've established our black versus white TikTok <laughs> challenges between the jumping off the s- ski boat and the stealing uh, Hyundai's in Detroit. I think I think we can kind of establish a ethnic pattern to our TikTok challenges. I haven't seen all the footage, but I'm just I'm playing a hunch. Like black yeah. Twitter, it's a uh, black TikTok. <laughs> yeah, one guy's on his dad's sixty thousand dollars ski Nordique. <laughs> On Lake Michigan, and then the guys yeah. in Detroit oh, I think I found it. hacking into Hondas. <laughs> I, I think there's a cultural divide yeah. here. And for at a rare time, where and I agree with the uh, brothers on this one. <laughs> yeah, theirs is more useful. Oh, you I did? sent it to the guys to put on the screen, but let's. I, can you figure out what that is? Uh. I'm just seeing two guys fighting. Right, but let it run. I did. It's seven seconds long. The whole the whole video is these two guys fighting. The next thing that comes up is the the chick with the diva cup, which is well, a Ben and Jerry's that's your, waffle that's cup. Your algo. That's your algorithm. Uh, right, mine right. is just gay Wait, docs. Come so on. Yours was just, it just There's came no up pussy on my algorithm at all. Yeah, so this is the video, right? Yeah. Yeah, so it's seven seconds long, and then it goes to the next video, which I don't know how you saw that, because TikTok wouldn't allow that. Why did someone send me two unknown middleweights not exchanging in the center of the ring <laughs> yeah, for seven seconds? To, what does this t- top say there? A little out of pocket, but okay. Huh. And that's a, that's a ton of views. John, Anik, everybody. But what, what, no knockouts, no punches landed. What, what are we? What are we looking at? I think was was it was there a low blow attempt? I don't know. And then the next, and then the next thing i i see is the you know, the 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 waffle cone going up the coos so yeah. it was full on vagina yeah it pro- if it did if you did see it it got taken off it that's what happened oh cuz somebody was like it was a woman demonstrating it oh if it's a, like a tutorial nah. but yeah, but on you herself, can't show like a not vagina on a model, still like a like a plastic mannequin or something no she sh- showed the cone then she pulled her shirt up to show her uh, misshapen vagine and then shoved it up there. Damn. Was it like colored or was it like uh, pink or green? Or? <laughs> uh, and the, the, the diva cup looked sort of waffle coney. It looked kind of cardboardy. Okay. I, I, listen, I had to go back and watch uh, <laughs> yeah. Rock Hudson Doc again <laughs> yeah. to cleanse my palate. <laughs> I made a promise, no pussy. <laughs> I just want to talk to Rock Hudson. Whoa, whoa, whoa. All right. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I can't help you there. Is uh, Les Claypool on? All right, take a quick break. Be back with Les Claypool right after this. Hey, it's Adam Carolla. Is your vehicle not stopping like it used to? Or does it squeal? Does it shake? Does it shimmy? Does it grind when you hit that brake? Well, don't miss the summer brake deals at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Brake best, select, and import direct brake pads and rotors are engineered for all driving conditions to restore and improve braking performance with application-specific friction formulas, noise-canceling shims, and uh, low dusting operation. Trust brake best and import direct to deliver better braking. It's important. It's a safety issue, and right now, you can get two bottles of O'Reilly Brake Parts Cleaner for only 8 bucks. See store for details. Don't take any chances on your next brake repair. The professional parts people at O'Reilly Auto Parts will help you find the brake parts and supplies you need to do the job right the first time. So stop by your local O'Reilly Auto Parts today or visit O'ReillyAuto.com. Let me tell you about Turo Innovative. It's the world's largest car sharing marketplace with Turo. You can book any car you want, wherever you want, from a community of local hosts. Browse a huge selection of vehicles for just about any occasion or budget. Book an SUV or minivan for a family road trip, a pickup truck for some errands, or even test drive an EV. Every trip is backed by liability insurance. Terms, conditions, and exclusions apply. Find your drive. Forget your boring rental cars at Turo, T-U-R-O dot com. Les Claypool has joined us, singer bassist from Primus and also now touring Les Claypool's Fearless Flying Frog Brigade. 
We've got some dates coming up. Good to see you, Les. Aloha. Um, much to talk to you about, but the first thing that jumped out at me when I was uh, looking at your bio last night was you have a studio, I believe, that you named Rancho Relaxo. That is very correct. And is that because you named it after one of my favorite Simpson episodes? Uh, partially. Uh, I, I We've lived there now for like 28 years, and it was just... <clears throat> one of those things I was driving up the driveway with my realtor and this, this, uh, icon from the seventies popped up, which was our house, which we, became our house, which was built by a, um, a, uh, orthopedic surgeon in 1973. So it was like the fanciest house of 1973 you could get in, in Sebastopol. And it looked like a hacienda and my, and I immediately said Rancho Relaxo. So it's it's just kind of stuck. That was uh that's not the name of the episode. The name of the episode is Marge goes not Homer just, Alone. Homer Alone, but she goes Season to Rancho three. Relaxo. And if anyone wants to take a deep dive into the Simpsons, that's one of my favorite all time episodes. Um have you did you guys come on uh Loveline back in the day? I'm trying to remember. Oh, you'll remember when I tell you the story. <laughs> oh, all right. Good. Uh, yes, we we showed up back when I was touring with uh, some friends of mine in a group called the Holy Mackerel. Mm-hmm. And uh, we were traveling separately for some reason. I can't remember why, but they showed up in an RV and I showed up in, in our bus. And uh, my guys were pretty drunk. <laughs> and... Um, one of them proceeded to tell you the story about how he used to like to take the family tusk off the mantelpiece and insert it into his rectum for a masturbatory frenzy. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's and all you, coming. <laughs> you, were, you were quite taken by it, but old Dr. Drew was not real thrilled with the story. Well, the thing about Loveline is it started at 10 in the evening. And if anyone knows anything about rock and roll, a lot of these guys like to party, and especially the British bands like Blur <laughs> and stuff like that. They would just come in at 10 o'clock just shit-faced. <laughs> and uh, so it, it happened from, from time to time. I guess I, guess I got used to it. Um, you're going out, and I was, I was kind of surprised. He's on the bus right now. Oh, you're on the bus right now. Uh, I'm on a bus right now. Yes, correct. You got Sean Lennon playing guitar, right? Yeah, correct. And then you got uh, Paolo Baldi, I think I'm saying that right. Paolo Baldi, yes. Who's the drummer from Cake, which is one of my favorite fun bands. He used to come in all the time as well. And <clears throat> how do you figure these things out? Like, what's the process in terms of assembling the, the band? Well, Paolo's been playing with me for years, actually. he was play- I think he was playing with me before he was playing with Cake. But And we also have Harry Waters on keys, who's, you know the the apple that fell from the from the uh roger waters tree wow and uh and then mike dylan uh the the old slippery d on uh various marimba uh vibraphone and junkyard percussion so it's it's quite the it's quite the ensemble um a friend of ours a friend of the show uh mike lynch who also works for the show says he saw you guys at finway just recently i think and said he loved it well, that's good to hear. Yeah, sorry, it wasn't really much of a question. <laughs> well, I have a question. So, <laughs> so you've been known to consider yourself uh, the evil Knievel of bass, uh, because uh, I, I imagine because you you take risks, especially live, you just go for it. Yeah. Uh, um, but yeah, if, I, and I either I either land it or I or I or I break all my bones in front of Caesar's palace. <laughs> right, but at least but you're going for it, which I love. But if we're talking just pop bass lines, just a pop song. What is your favorite pop bass line? Pop bass line? I mean, I'm not real good with favorites, but I mean, one of the greatest bass lines that's incredibly popular of all times is the bass line from uh, Taxman. So Paul McCartney has been known to lay down some pretty amazing bass parts. Right. Who are the, who's your uh, Mount Rushmore of basses? I mean, you know, I started off listening to guys like, Getty, and Getty's a buddy of mine. We've become very good friends. But Getty Lee, Chris Squire, and then Larry Graham, Lewis Johnson, Stanley Clark, um, 
uh, that would be a big Mount Rushmore. Tony Levin. Tony Levin's a big hero of mine. So yeah, that's a lot of mountain to. Oh, here's a here's an esoteric question, but I think we're all qualified to answer. As a kid, it was all guitar hero stuff. Every every tennis racket, air guitar was always always lead guitar. As I got older, I started getting into the bass more and mm. kind of digging the bass more. And I don't know if it's a maturity thing or I don't know if the bass is stock has gone up. Like when I was in high school, nobody drank gin and nobody drank whiskey. <laughs> they just drank vodka, everything. And now there's tons of gin going around and tons of whiskey. And, and you know, no one, no one ever would have drank um, rye. It didn't exist, but now it's had like a resurgence. Right. Is bass, you think the bass is having its its heyday? Is it a resurgence thing, or is that just me getting older? So you're saying bass is the rye of the musical world? Is <laughs> yeah, it, it was popular in the 30s. We'll go on record. Went away for 65 <laughs> years and is now sort of back in favor. Well, I mean, I, I became a bass. I, I, I bought a bass when I was 14 and I was instantly in a band because everybody wanted to be Eddie Van Halen. Nobody wanted to play the bass. So as soon as I, I couldn't even play the damn thing and I was instantly in a band. Um, but I've always thought the bass was just more sultry. It's just a it's just a it's, it's, it's a girthier, sultry instrument. And I was always drawn to that. Um, as far as a resurgence, I mean. I, I think sound systems now also support those frequencies much Ooh. better. So it's much more much more prevalent in the mix. Even when you listen to old recordings, like you listen to those old Beatles recordings, the bass is massive. Whereas, you know, you didn't really notice it so much when you were listening to mom's AM radio going down the street, you know? Right, it was coming out of one speaker. I recently, and I have no idea if you know this guy, but I was recently saw ZZ Top and their bass player passed away, but they has been replaced with the guy who played the 17 string bass. Was it 17? 17 string bass? Yeah. Oh, was it? Yeah, it was something like it that. It was a 17. I mean, it, it's like novelty, right? I mean, it's a novelty bass, but it's 17. I mean, we may oh. have a new Evil Can Evil in town. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just I, saying. It might be. Playing the bass, yes. but I didn't know if that got to you or not. Uh, no, this is the first I've heard of that. I think so. we'll find a picture of it right. and you will. You will marvel at it. Yeah, I love yeah. how when, when Les was young, yeah, anybody would just, uh, he could play in any band. Like, for me growing up, if anybody needed a bass player, it's like, okay, let's just find anybody and just teach them how to play the bass in this band because that's how, that's how lo Les we thought of it back then. But obviously, right. it's important. Like, Les even, you tried out for Metallica in, high, was it high school or college or something? I did not get the gig. I don't know if you noticed. I, I'm aware <laughs> of that, yeah. Although I, I think you definitely have the chops for it. Well, they liked you, but you were too busy for them, right? There was just too much going on with your bass uh, playing. There's, there's, there's a lot of things that were so. So basically, um, I went to De Anza High School in uh, El Sobrante, California. But if you're from El Sobrante, you say El Sobrante. And uh, there was a guy sitting behind me in my algebra class, Mr. Kelly's algebra class that would sit there and roll up dime bags and, and look at guitar magazines and he would sell me weed and his name was Kirk Hammett. So I've known Kirk since high school. So awesome. when Cliff passed away, um, he, they, you know, Kirk gave me a call and said, Hey, you want to come audition? And I, to be honest with you, I didn't really know much about the metal scene. So I kind of showed up with two different colored tennis shoes, a bleach blonde mohawk and big baggy skater pants. And they looked at me like I was a bug. So uh, <laughs> I did not get the gig. But that being said, I, I mean, Robert Trujillo is is one of my favorite people in the music industry. He's a, just an amazing, wonderful guy. And he's a motherfucker on that instrument. So they got the right guy. Nice. Yeah. I think we can well, share. They got Newstead before that. <laughs> we can share a picture of uh, the ZZ Top bass player. Oh, my God. With your last. <laughs> <laughs> How did you miss this? I love that guy already. I, I like his style, too. Look at him. What's his name? Holy <coughs> shit. Look at that thing. We'll figure it out. I, I became very enamored because I showed <laughs> up to the concert for the song he was playing the 17-string Canary Yellow giant bass for with also the sunglasses and the crazy silver hair and the crazy beard. And he looked like a demon to me <laughs> on, on stage. And he, it didn't even touch the lower strings up top. 
I, I, I don't, I don't know. Um, I don't think it, it doesn't matter. That's <laughs> like when, that's like when uh, Rick Nielsen used to come out with that, you know, that six neck guitar of his. It was like it didn't matter what he played on it. He just looked so badass. <laughs> so this guy, this guy wins the game right now. I mean, Jimmy Page says it's ninety percent how you look. This guy wins right now. Elwood <laughs> Francis is L the, and the name. He's got a great name. It's a good name. <laughs> I he, love this guy already. He was the I think he was the guitar tech for ZZ Top for like twenty years. And when the bass player died, he just stepped right in. To He's that really role. just playing the same <clears throat> amount of strings, probably. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. But it is, it's it's theatrical. Yeah. Les, who were you listening to like when you were coming up, like during that sort of punk phase you were talking about? Because you're a California guy. I'm a California guy. We're the same age. I've listened to K Rock yeah, yeah. out I mean, here. I was never a big punk guy. I mean, I, you know, I, I obviously, I, like I said, I grew up listening to Getty and, and, um, and Chris Squire. And then when I discovered Larry Graham and Lewis Johnson and Stanley Clark and all the funk stuff and all the thumping and the plucking, that just changed my world. But then I got into a lot of esoteric stuff like, you know, early Peter Gabriel and and uh, 80s Crimson and and Public Image Limited and things like that. So did you? Um, but I remember when Primus was coming up, you know, we we would be listening to, you know, a lot of bad brains and things like that as far as if anything that was kind of punkish. Did uh, and how the whole South Park thing come about? Uh, we got a phone call from a couple of guys fresh out of college that had this little cartoon they wanted to show us, and uh, they were big Primus fans. And they said, "Hey, would you do this thing for us?" And I always joke that we got seventy four dollars. We actually, I think, we got five grand or something to do this thing. And nobody thought it was going to get on TV, let alone take over the planet. <laughs> but it was just very cool. So we said, "Okay, we'll do it," and we did it. And and they've taken over the planet. What was the direction they gave you? Because obviously you didn't know anything about the show before it aired. I don't even think it was called South Park yet. He, I remember um, I may have been talking to Jason McHugh, who later went on to produce this little indie film I did. But um, they just said, oh, we have this show. It's about this little town called South Park. And there's these kids and blah, 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 blah. And we watched the card, the, um, you know, the Spirit of Christmas. And so I just started writing about South Park, and that's how the 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 the, the, the lyrics came about. The um, do you play it live, like at your shows? Uh, very very <laughs> rarely. I mean, we, obviously we did it for the big um, the big South Park uh, twenty five a year show with Ween a few months or last year. We we did that, um, and we played the because there's various versions of it as well. So we did. We did the few different ver- the history of the South Park theme, basically. I uh, I remember being at K Rock with uh, Jimmy Kimmel. It must have been about ninety four, ninety five, when that Christmas uh, Matt and Trey Christmas thing came about. It was a I, it was a VHS tape that just got circulated. It's interesting to me that pre internet we still had things that would go viral all the time. But it was all done mechanically, like it was not digital. It was physical. Mm-hmm. But things would still go viral. Like I had roommates in like 1991 who were big Jerky Boy fans in La Cunada, California, getting tapes and and stuff. Like it was it was you wouldn't think it would be as possible as it was to have things go viral back then, but. I think everyone got their hands on that tape, or at least everyone everyone with a decent sense of humor. <clears throat> yeah, you know, it's like times are it, it, it just it's the Overton window. You know, you, what what kids see today and and technology of today versus what we used to see back in the old days, the Pony Express, you know, running things around and whatnot. So, uh, yeah, I mean, people want to want people want to find cool shit, and they're going to find a way to find cool shit. Now it's just it's just spewed upon you. Yeah, and you're told to like it, which I, I usually reject. But I don't pay attention to those guys. I don't listen to them. Les, what are your thoughts on bands? A lot of bands these days they use like backing tracks or they play to a click and they're kind of playing along to the song. Do you guys do that? And do you have any thoughts on bands that do do that? If not, 
Uh, we don't do that, but you know, I I think if you have something artistic to express, uh, you express it however you can. You know, I I if it's something that I that I hear and I go, wow, how the hell did they think of that? Then I'm intrigued and I will become a fan. If it seems derivative, then I I tend to move along. But you know, I whatever tool you can use to 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 get your point across and your artistic uh, vision, uh, who cares what it is. Uh, yeah. I, yeah, I think you're being magnanimous. Uh, it's a little oh, bit I of train. Go. If we I gave less, if we gave less three beers and uh, <laughs> potted the mics down, we get a different answer. Oh, you think? Yeah. I think. I, I don't know. It's a little training wheels. I, I don't like, I, I don't know. I don't even like sampling. I just, I like it pure, but. But I agree. If it's but good, you know, it's but good. You know what? But you know what? I toured with Public Enemy years ago, and they had you know samples from uh, James Brown drummer beats and, what, and all these different things, and it was fucking unbelievable. Some of the greatest music I've ever heard. So, I, I just think it just depends on what it is and how it's applied. I mean, I, I, I grant it, like a Milli Vanilli type thing. Yeah, screw that. But you know. <laughs> There's always going to be people that want want the Big Mac, you know. They're not everybody wants the, you know, are, are going to go go looking for the gourmet burger. So, did is it for you, for you? Is it about variety and switching things up and like just keeping things fresh? Like, uh, I mean, personally, people say to me sometimes, "Well, what do you like doing? You like doing stand up? You like doing the podcast? You like writing books?" I I would just say I like doing what I've done the least of lately. You know, something new. Like the, the the part that's good about the arts or entertainment is the variety. It's not going to the same box factory in Gardena every day and doing this the the same thing. And you just seem like a guy who wants to mix it up constantly. And is that your wiring? Um, I mean, we're on the planet for a finite amount of time. And when I get a phone call from, you know, Stuart Copeland or Tom Waits or whoever to do a project, I'm going to do it, you know. And, you know, variety is the spice of life. And I also think I have friends that are in bands, big bands. It's not necessarily the smartest business move to do what I'm doing. You know, it's all about building that brand. And I have friends in big bands that aren't really allowed to do do other projects. You know, because you gotta you gotta get can't can't convolute that brand. But that's just not me. And I and I honestly think it makes Primus better because if all I did was Primus, I, I would be you know I, I'd be scratching my itch with things that really shouldn't be on a Primus record. You know what I mean? I always say that a lot of these things that I do on my own are things that I I, I wouldn't inflict upon the guys in Primus. So you you do get paid. And I'm a very fortunate guy. I've had cool, cool guys, of, you know, cool people have wanted to play with me. And that's very exciting to me. That's my favorite thing about my career is is all the the amazing heroes I've been able to befriend and collaborate with. That's an amazing thing to me. It blows my mind. And this is I, I was about to say I had a dumber. I mean, a less artistic version of what you encapsulated moments ago, <laughs> which is. I used to be a carpenter, and I me and this guy worked together, and one day we'd be doing drywall, and the next day we'd be doing cabinets, and the next day we'd be doing foundation work. And, and I would say, you know, you don't get paid doing something sort of different every day. You get paid if you just do drywall. You'll get paid a lot better than if you keep bouncing around. You'll be bored as shit, but you get paid to do one thing more. And I, I sort of feel you artistically. You're much better off from a pay standpoint, just picking a lane mm -hmm. and being that person and doing that all the time. But I think if you're really good, you can diversify and experiment. So I think I just paid us both a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it sounds like. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I was a carpenter as well, so. Oh, I, that's I, I get, right. I get, I get the analogy. How long um, did you do that I mean, for? It, it, it's like, what if, you, what if you only did love lines your entire career? You'd probably be bored out of your mind, you know what I mean? Not if your drunken friends came in and talked about putting a moose horn up their ass every night. I would be delighted to be right there right now. Gray hair, a large prostate. Tell me more. Tell me more. How long were you a carpenter? Oh, sh shit. I don't even remember. You know, I, So I come from a long line of auto mechanics. And my father was very supportive of me doing the music thing. But he would always say, you know, this music thing's great. 
but you got to learn a trade. You got to learn a trade. You need to trade. So I had a lot of trades. I mixed auto paints. I busted tires. I was a bench tech at an audio company. And uh, one of the last jobs I had before making a living as a musician was I was a carpenter and I tended to lean more towards finish work because I just, you know, I wasn't burly enough to get out there and frame in the heat and all that. Whatnot. I would do it, but I didn't enjoy it. But I, I, I actually very much enjoyed being a carpenter. It's really satisfying. It, it doesn't pay that well, and the hours are a little early for rock and Baseball roll. Now. But it, it's a it's a good, satisfying gig, and I don't think enough people are focusing on that enough. Like when you're done, you've done something. You have something. You can physically see what you've done, and you feel good at the end of the day. Like it's it it's and Rewarding, it's a good yeah. skill. It's a skill to have if you become yeah, I mean, something it's me else throughout all my, all my years with my own properties and whatnot. But also I was a carpenter in Berkeley and Alameda. So all that amazing architecture and those cool old houses from the thirties and whatnot, just, I got to work on some gorgeous, gorgeous, uh, uh, homes. So it was, it was amazing. And also I, it's a good base because when then you've had real jobs, like especially with the tires and mixing paint and, you know, auto shop and carpentry and all that kind of stuff. Then when you get a good job where you're getting paid to do your art, it just doesn't feel worky. Um, I'm guessing, or maybe it's getting a little cathartic, but I just, once you get a base of real work underneath you for a number of years, then doing your job, going out on stage at night, it just doesn't, f I, 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 it doesn't feel as much of a job as it does to others, I would say. Well, I mean, as you know, I, you know, first of all, anybody that can do what they enjoy for a living wins the game. You know, I've taught my kids that whether you're making 500 bucks a night or 500,000 bucks a night, you know, it's, it, you win the game because you get up in the morning and you get to, but even if it's your favorite thing to do, there's it been, it, there are times when there's a when it's a grind, you know. But I will say, and I've had some pretty cool jobs. This being a bass player and, and playing with cool people is in front of uh, lots of people is my favorite job. It's an amazing job. You know, it, I, it, I, I'm not going to complain about it. Um, I should give uh, the dates out, or at least the website out, so people can buy tickets and know when when you're coming to a city near them is it lesclaypool.com is where you go for for tickets i think i got Did that I right yeah, yeah oh. it is lesclaypool.com and by the way this saturday in phoenix is the last opportunity to see this band play uh pink floyd's animals in oh. its entirety which uh, are, which actually is. that's that's not entirely true it's ah. the last it's the last of this tour but we're going back out in the fall and doing an evening with because we we felt that the we we have an opening band and it, and we have all this material so we're going to go back out in the fall and do just uh, an evening with so it's going to be a much longer set but we will be doing animals in the fall as well. Nice. Is Pink Floyd one of your favorites? Uh, I mean, yeah, I've, I grew up on on Floyd, of course. But what happened was years ago in the late '90s, Primus broke up. We said we were on hiatus because we were too chicken shit to admit that we broke up. <laughs> sure. we, we broke up and. Um, and I flipped out, you know, I had two little kids, I had a mortgage, and I was like, what the hell am I going to do now? And I had this old Airstream motorhome, and I just loaded up a bunch of my favorite players in it, and we drove up and down the coast playing bars. And I had a keyboardist who's, you know, he's Jeff Kameni, who plays with Dead & Company now. And uh, I'd always said, if I have a keyboardist, I want to play Pigs, because it's one of my all-time favorite Floyd tunes. And so we learned Pigs, and then we thought, well, shit, let's learn the whole Animals record. Then we don't have to pay an opening act. We just do you know, a longer, longer night. And so that's how it all came about. Yeah, I was surprised my 17-year-old was really into Pink Floyd. So I wasn't early on, whether well, they were huge when I was in high school. I think The Wall came out in like 80 81? Late 79, 79, it was the Pink Floyd of the 80s. Oh, yeah. Well, what year, what year did you graduate high school? Uh, 1982. All right. I, I got you beat by one year. Oh, okay. So your birthday's or maybe earlier or later? No, earlier than mine. Hey, Les, yeah. this is Dawson, the engineer. Can I, if I may ask you a question, um, you just uh, reminded me the first time I ever heard uh, pigs from the record Animals 
was at a, a little cub club called the Berkeley Square, and it was uh, covered by um, a, a, a punk band. I'm curious about growing up in the Bay Area and playing music at an early age. What were some of the some of the clubs you loved around there that that you would play and 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 the really lax atmosphere as very much it was in the San Fernando Valley of 14 year old kids getting wasted at clubs. Well, I mean, Berkeley Square was the spot I used to buy. Yeah. I spent I lived in Berkeley and I spent almost every night at the square, either playing or seeing bands. And it was an amazing place. That's where we recorded the first Primus record, the live record, Suck on This record was at the Berkeley Square. Um, so that was definitely one. I beam in San Francisco, which is no longer Berkeley Square is no longer as well. Um, you know, I'm an old guy. All these places are gone now. Right. The stone on on um, you know, our first gig was the Fab Mab, the Mabuhay Gardens, you know, where Dead Kennedys used to rock all the time. Um you know, when Broadway was just so happening with 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 live bands and, you know, we'd go play we'd go play a uh, freaking uh, the Mabuhay Gardens and get in fights with skinheads after the show every night. It was crazy. They would hang out in the alley and, and <laughs> torment us. We had this giant. Uh, uh, he wasn't really a manager. He was just a buddy, but he'd always just get in there and start knocking heads. It was crazy. And did but you guys fun. did you guys ever work your way up to the Warfields and the Fillmore's or did it go, you know, straight from? straight from the Berkeley Square to uh, Primus. No, no, no. Primus has always been a baby step. We've always taken baby steps to get to where we are. So I, I still play the Warfield, and I play the Fillmore once in a while uh, for because I have so many bands. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, We're always looking for spots to play. But I love the Warfield and the Fox and the Fillmore. And, you know, but it's also amazing to play Red Rocks and, and Greek Theater Berkeley, too. So. Sure. It's crazy how variety. variety is the spice of life. Sure. It's so weird how lawless everything was. They would have mosh pits. People would be kicking the shit out of each other, spitting at the band. The band would be spitting at. I I saw uh, the plasmatics at Perkins Palace in Pasadena. A lot of alliteration in that statement. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they were they blew up a Lincoln Continental on stage. They fucking blew it up. It was like they blew it up. I was in the in the mosh pit. They, Those were the days. Wendy O. Williams, of course. Oh, chainsawed a guitar in half and <laughs> threw it at the audience. Like it, it I don't know. There were unauthorized no, pyrotechnics. I, I don't think there were lawyers or people weren't nearly no. as litigious back then. I mean, there'd be 10,000 lawsuits a show. <laughs> I found out now. when I was 15 that the uh, best thing to do was to hang out in the alley by the backstage door of the Berkeley Square, ask a band if you can help load in, sure. and then you carry a guitar and then you can drink at the bar. <laughs> well, you get, yeah, you get, there you you go. get to get in. Goddamn lawless. Uh, lesclaypool.com is where you go for tickets and uh, they're coming to a town near you and uh, God bless all the iterations of Les Claypool uh, and uh, I think you guys are coming out to the will turn out here too am I right about that yeah I think it's the uh, second to last show on this uh, it, it's, I think it's Friday is it Friday it's this week we'll, uh, we'll look for it it's a beautiful theater i played there before and it's it's very uh uniquely and creatively named because it's on the corner of western and wilshire and it's called the will turn mm -hmm. yeah and it's basically you always remember where it is just based on those are the two nearest streets les thanks for joining us it's been too long and uh, i'm glad you reminded me about the story with the guy in the horn <laughs> yep, yep that that story will never die <laughs> Les Claypool, everyone. Thanks, Les. Hi, man. Have a good one. You, you too. too. All right, Adam, before we get out of here, we got to do one more foot. Well, there's two There's two things we got to figure out. Okay. Uh, one is uh, they figured out why that UFC video was, was sent to me. Okay. Which, uh, <laughs> why is it? I have no idea. <laughs> so we're watching. Both of these fighters have dealt with custody battles involving their children. Oh, the announcer. <laughs> oh, it was muted before. Yeah. Oh, and that was their... That's one of the big factoids that the yeah. announcer had. We That's got uh, two of uh, both our fighters today are, gonna, are involved in heavy custody battles. <laughs> both deadbeat dads. Yeah. And uh, oh, that's I didn't have the sound up, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. But it still and, doesn't explain the loving cop, right? That's No, but I got to say, you glanced over the... 
the will turn joke and that uh you know it's the corner of wilshire wilshire and western and then the joke you say is good thing oh that's right it's I- not on the corner of pico and venice <laughs> oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. Can I tell you, I pl- I performed at the Wiltern. I opened for Tom Segura there, and I had moved to L.A. two weeks before that. The amount of depression that I had <laughs> after that show was done, I'm like, I might never do this again. And mm-hmm. I've been here for two weeks. Now I'm going to go back to the fucking open mic. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, it's it was the worst. Fe- like, it was so weird. It was like the greatest feeling to get to do that right. and be there and do it. But then it was like. The come down was intense. I got it because you're like I might never push that rock up the mountain again. Who knows if I ever get to do that again? Yeah, yeah. You I, I forum, played. Right? I played there, and I feel that way. Yeah, but yeah. you headlined it at least. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and uh, we have our foot update. Yes. All oh, right. Yes. So just one final update. Now we're up to about 500 votes. Josh. Mm. In the lead still with eighty percent. Oh his man, it just, it just, He's going just keeps deeper. going. But we oh. do have some. We do have some more comments. What about the slaughter rule? When did we have <laughs> yeah. that? At eighty-six <laughs> percent. All right, let's hear some comments. All right, so yeah, here's one of them. So Ben has them. So the the both Hender are Lord weird. Says both feet are weird, but number one is finger toes. So I guess number two is better. It's nicer. Finger toes. Both yeah. are weird. What are we? What kind of feet are this? Is this guy seeing? <laughs> He's or, literally staring at Ken's feet from yeah. the doll. Like he's not living <laughs> yeah. in reality. This is crazy. They, they, yeah, they, go they, fucking two find your of the two evils. Go find your dad and ask to tell him to kick his sandals <laughs> off and tell me what you <laughs> yeah. think. Go find your mom. And yeah, your mom. <laughs> um, and then at Chelsea J says number two is nicer. WTF is wrong with number one's toes. Broke them bad one more one or more times. No. No, I feel like your foot was toes. posing. It was almost like doing a little. I like, just needed to space them out a little, <laughs> a little correctly. This is way too harsh. All right, let's do one more. At uh, Jeremy McKee says, "Oh, one has the nicer calves." Oh, is that me? Yeah. Let's All right. So you got All some right. Calves. Let's yeah. go out on that. Note. <laughs> sure. All right. Uh, let's see, uh, Josh. Well, the dates are down the road. Yeah, just but check the- out the podcast every Wednesday on YouTube and everywhere you listen. And he'll Josh post his dates show. on Instagram. They're up on Instagram. Instagram yeah. yeah, it's just uh, the fall in the fall. Uh, you can go to adamcurl.com. I'm coming to Vegas, Portland at the uh, Helium in Portland coming up July 28th, 29th, Appleton, Wisconsin, August 25th, 26th, Honolulu, mm. Blue Note, September 8th and 9th. Just go to adamcurl.com for all the live shows. Until next time, Sam Crawl for Josh Potter and Les Claypool and Chris Max Pattis saying, Mahalo. Mahalo.